All right, what's up, guys? This is Ostin, back at you with the Life of Detours podcast. I'm actually on one of the uh, business of detours because I'm sitting here talking to my buddy uh, Josh Santion. Is that how you yeah, say the last name? Close okay. enough. I thought I had it. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, so Josh, you run Central Arts. It's a nonprofit. It started in Bedford, was it? Yeah. Okay. And then now you have this Hearst location. Right? Yeah, we have a Hearst location. Then we also doing a program with Richardson over at Network for Community Ministries out over there. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like how all these nonprofits, like everybody's kind of working together and like getting all this stuff kind of accomplished. So, yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, so, so what is Central Arts all about? Like what, like what is the idea kind of behind it? Because I can obviously see the art here, and it is awesome, man. Like, so did you do most of the stuff, or was it actually people? the only thing I have in here right now? Currently, we were working with pick bricks. We were doing like these bricks. I designed the last four of those. The rest of them were like a kit. We just that's how I discovered them. But now they're doing a lot of our kids programming. Oh. So we're doing like pick brick academy where we're working with the kids and letting them design their own stuff and figuring mm-hmm. out like how to make like pixel based art like oh, all wow. these like little lego knockoff kind of things which work really well look really really well so. yeah they look awesome dude yeah i like how those come together yeah. yeah it's like whenever you're sitting this close and you're looking at them it kind of like gets blurry but like as you're walking in or like if you're a little further off they look awesome yeah it's that whole pointillism kind of aspect of it too i've been making some big pieces with it so it's kind of nice it's kind of a cool medium to use because like no one's really using that yeah it's pretty undiscovered so nice, i yeah. really really like it and that, mm-hmm. We're designing a Noah's art kit for them, and then we're also doing some other. They're going to be doing a toy fest, so we'll be designing toys, like little components for their little booth and everything. Oh, cool, man! Yeah, that's, that's kind awesome. of fun. Yeah, that's really cool, dude. So, uh, so starting off in Bedford, like, so what is the idea? So, like, are you trying to like reintroduce arts into people's lives, or like, how is this working? Well, initially what happened was that we had this empty storefront, Mm -hmm. like this whole shopping center over in Bedford. It was like Cedric was my son, and he used to say, Dad, there used to be some like pretty like just off the wall stuff that used to happen here. Like Mm -hmm. it was just nobody, there was no shops there. So it was just this wild west of this shopping center. (laughs) Yeah, like kind of an abandoned kind of spot there. Yeah, not abandoned, but, you know, businesses would come in, they would fail, and then nothing would have any longevity, and then they'd. They started doing a remodel on it, and it just kind of sat there, like, empty for about two years. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we got involved with the project because I was a cultural commission, and Mayor Griffin at the time asked us if we could do, like, these shopping center pop-ups. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, why not? So he got us in touch with the shopping center owner, and he's like, yeah, can you put together an art show in, like, 30 days? And I'm like, sure. Uh, yeah, probably. And at that <laughs> time, you know, I didn't know anybody in the art scene, so I was, like, just fresh out of, like, I mean, I have a construction company. I have an insulation company. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. I do all the engineering and all that stuff. So it's just like, all right, I guess so. There you go. Yeah. So me and my buddy Bob built all the walls and we just started putting up artwork. And then within like 90 days, that shopping center turned around. And now it went from being like 30% occupied up to like, I think currently right now it's sitting about like 85% because they lost wow. like one business during COVID. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy, dude. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of like you took the one idea and like made something kind of sustainable, something yeah. that was like a staple and then everybody kind of built around that. Uh-huh. Because like then we had What's Popping came in and Sue from What's Popping said she drove around and she noticed that there was all this art in the art in the windows and she said, mm-hmm. well, that shopping center up actually cares about what they're doing and it's hard to get it's hard to get people to call you back when you're trying to start a business so i have no idea why (laughs) it's like hey i want to give you money and then they're like well (laughs) it's like Like, can i I, I give you some money Mm -hmm. like i would love to give you some money yeah then you don't get a call back or you don't get anything like that so then it's just like Mm -hmm. (laughs) like moments of like wow it takes forever yeah so you know, so they she moved in, and then we got Moonlight Cakes, and we got Holy Boba. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a pharmacy that came in. Nice steak yeah. one left, and then we got a little uh, Loatian place that didn't last long. But now we've got a chicken place that's moving in there. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. Now there's a new CBD place that just opened up in there. Oh, cool! Yeah. So yeah, it's just just like businesses go, and then they come right back in, like within yeah. less than like a month or two. That's released. So yeah, our landlords are fantastic at that. I mean, they're just. Yeah, they're constantly looking or finding people for that. Yeah, and yeah. then there's a demand for it because mm-hmm. before it was like just ghost town. And, yeah. Is know, it in a good location? Or yeah, like it's right it's... off of Harwood by um, Harwood and Central. 
So okay. it's about like maybe like five miles away from here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that sounds like I know I've heard of Harwood. I'm not. I'm not from here, so mm-hmm. I notice a lot of people like talking streets. And I'm yeah. Like, yeah. I think I know I've heard of that one. Harwood's but... the biggest one. It's where Twisted Root is. That's our our big oh, okay. landmark. Yeah. Okay. That makes because sense. Because if you don't know anything, you know where Twisted Root is mm-hmm. at least. And that's the is that the, the burger, the burger place? place? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That yeah. was like almost flirted with going out of business, and they came back in, mm-hmm. and then someone else bought it during COVID. So. Okay. I got you. Were they on the way out before? Uh, COVID yeah. COVID. COVID, like, was going to take them out, and then... Mm. Yeah, that got so many people, dude. Man, it was yeah. so weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how did... So, you started this, and so did it start as a non-profit? Or yeah, it's always been a non-profit. Yeah. So then what we did was, uh, there was a city council person named Ray Champney, and he was phenomenal. Mm. And his whole thing was that he wanted to turn Bedford into a cultural destination. There you go. Okay. And I was the vice chair of the Cultural Commission, mm-hmm. and so what we would do is we would just try to figure out how to make Bedford a cultural destination and one of the things is that you had to have like a daily thing that was going on in the art world that you could say well if you came to Bedford you could do X oh, okay yeah so for, for like, some kind of small event or like yeah pop-up and or for something. like the longest time we were doing like two shows a month so mm-hmm. we would like set up and tear down the gallery and was, <laughs> yeah you know and this is like trying to run a construction company at the same time and do oh, all this wow. other stuff and yeah and it's just like nuts but we were just running and gunning and yeah we had a bunch of uh, local artists come through, and mm-hmm. we start, We had a pretty good culture going, then COVID hit, and then it's like, now you have to rebuild that whole thing again, because yeah. a lot of people just fell off, or they got COVID crazy, or something. Right, yeah, they don't even want to step out of their house. Yeah, COVID, like was, COVID crazy is kind of weird. Cause it is like, weird, yeah. You're like, why are you still at home? Mm-hmm. And then there's people like still like running around like very aggressively in their masks. Like, yeah, if you like, walk up a little too close to them, they're like looking at you weird and stuff. Like, yeah, because my wife and I were like joking, like, is it because they have ugly mouths or are they just. So I was wondering about that because I noticed during COVID, like, if I was like, say I'm hungover, or, like, I'm really tired or something, yeah. I go to the store and I don't want anybody to talk to me, wearing the mask, that, that part of it mm-hmm. was nice, you know? And like, I was kind of thinking about that for like kids that are in school and stuff yeah. like that. Like, it kind of gives you that little like anonymity, like, like, we're not supposed to be talking, so like, just don't talk to me, you know? Yeah, or you, or you like see people that just their eyes are their nicest feature, so now they're covering up their dude. I so have seen that. Though. It's, it's like, I've seen it's like it's nuts. Cause mm-hmm. You're like, oh, that's what you look like. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I started, uh, so I, I bartend and like uh-huh. I've, I've worked at a couple of different places uh, after the pandemic, and like you meet these people at work like with their masks on, and then you see them later, and they're just totally different people. You're like. like Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah you were thriving though with the mouse. It was gone, good times so. for you. <laughs> I swear, yeah. that was God's call for you. With yeah, that <laughs> yeah, get it while it lasts. God, we're going to get morning. so counseled for that joke right there. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah it's it'll all. be all right. Mm-hmm. You know what? It is just part of life. You know. Yeah, yeah, and it's not like we're saying like I'm not taking a stance on the mouse, and I never have. I, you know, like that was kind of. Something like to each their own kind of deal for me. So like, it always amazed me like how militant people were about that. I know, yeah, and like they would really get up and on. And then like, it. oh, I'm so glad you don't have to see the stupid Facebook jokes about like the, <laughs> the this is where you wear your mask or mm-hmm. you know like if you have a little pee pee on you, it's like why is someone naked peeing on you? <laughs> right. Like yeah. what kind I of think logic you have a bigger that? problem here? I think that you've like society has completely fallen apart at that moment in time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like, nobody knew what the hell was going on, dude. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then you look back and you're like, oh, I'm so glad we did all that Mm -hmm. thanks for that four dollar gas now covid i swear right yeah yeah it's getting rough out here for real though on that it's i i noticed it was getting up to 450 and now it's dropping down a little bit and i'm like gotta drive that forerunner dude like i get yeah i get like 19 miles to the gallon it sucks like yeah, because I've got, like, an F-350 that I never drive. Oh, dude, you probably get, like, so 15. Or yeah, and then, like, on the construction <laughs> side, we've so, like, our generator's all diesel-based, and mm-hmm. then the box truck is gas-based, and the F-350 is diesel-based. Oh, uh, wow. So, okay, like, yeah. at any given moment, dude, I'm spending about $150 worth of gas. Yeah, because, I mean, that's, like, a 30-gallon tank probably at, like, five-something. And- yeah, so if the boys work all day, then that's, like, a full tank of gas. So oh, that's, like, 100 gosh. bucks right there. Yeah. Then 100 bucks to get to wherever you're going to go. Mm-hmm. Then you're carrying a bunch of stuff, and you're running back and forth with a guy. So my lead guy that, you know, drives that truck, I was like, man, I don't, I'm so glad I don't look at that. Yeah, right, yeah. It's something, like, at this point, I've had a lot of people, like, with, like, even their day-to-day jobs, like, that's now an expense that they have to worry about is the gas. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing because it's, like, like, I drive a, I either drive, like, a Mini Cooper or, like, this Kia Soul, and, yeah. like, they get, like, about, Mini gets, like, 32 miles a gallon, and yeah. Kia gets, like, 28, mm-hmm. and you're like, dang, that's... And I drive a ton, dude. I drive, like, at least, like, 200 miles a yeah, day. Yeah, you sound like you're really busy, dude. <laughs> like, I'm always <laughs> It's funny because I'm doing that mural in Richardson. Mm-hmm. And I'm having to go to, like, 
I do my normal job in the morning. So yeah. like um, like the other day, up I went, at what like six for that? Or? No, not like that. I'm not no. that dedicated. But <laughs> <get> like, uh, <laughs> what will happen is I'll get up and I'll go to work and mm-hmm. and I'll drive. Like the other day, I had to go to uh, where the hell did I go? I went to Far Away Land. <laughs> like, it was like a well, like Plano or something. No, like dude, no. Plano would be easy. I was going like like Gun Barrel or like or like Maybank or oh one of those tiny towns. like those like tiny on the tiny outskirts. tiny towns. Yeah, I was at Malakoff. Malakoff is like 120 miles from where we're standing right oh now. Oh my gosh! Dude, and it yeah. was like I went to there, did my quote, mm-hmm. um, spent all of like 15 minutes doing my job, and then drove all the way back to. Oh my goodness! Drove all the way to Richardson, painted it for until like five o'clock, and then got stuck in traffic. Yeah. And wow. Then, yeah. Like today, I've been. You know, I, went, I just went. I had an easy day. I just went to Richardson and just worked over there. That's nice. It's yeah. nice. You know, it's it's fun to paint this mural because it's it's nice. You can probably kind of let loose a little bit, like rather than like the construction side of it or like all the committees and all that stuff. Well, like, the thing is, I got really good at what I do, and mm-hmm. I wrote like spreadsheets to figure out like hours of like estimation stuff. Yeah. So then I could do like a, like one of my clients is out in Cisco, which is like a hundred miles like west of Fort Worth. Okay. Yeah. And. I, my joke was like, how long can I spend in Cisco? What's the least amount of time I could spend there? Yeah, right. Yeah. So it would be like two-hour round trip, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, two hour one way, then like another two hours back. Yeah. My record is like eight minutes. Of <laughs> just going there eight yeah. minutes and then back. And that was like doing the, like estimating, doing the quote, mailing it off and everything. Mm. Oh, nice. Dude. It was okay. just like, I was like, yeah. oh, well, what do I do with my day, you know? Yeah. So this is like you're going into, do you do residential or do you do I do both, of? residential, commercial, and all the okay, builds yeah. and all that stuff. So. so you go in, like, check and see, like, what they need. I do like, all the estimation, for, like, figure yeah. out what they need, design the package. And mm-hmm. I've been doing it for, like, 17 years. So I can just look at something and say, okay, that's what this is. Yeah, right. We're going to need X, X, Like, I already know yeah. that, I already know that everything's, like, 300 linear feet, and if mm-hmm. it's, like, a 4,000 square foot house, and yeah. know the math on it, mm-hmm. and, and it's, like, my my main guy will call me up. He's, like, boss, I need a, I need a quote on this house. I'll look it up on the tax roll, and I'll be, like. Nice, yeah. And I'll have a number to him, he's, like, how do you do that so quick? I said, because I've been doing it forever. It's yeah, just forever. math. It's literally math, yeah. It's, it's just, just all dimensions. Yeah. It takes me longer just to type in the number than it is to figure out the what Honestly, it takes you longer to get there than anything. It really does. <laughs> That's so crazy. That is like my whole life is just driving, and it's like. Mm. So you do like just a big blanket area of like this whole like DFW and then some? Like I went the other day, I got up last Saturday, I went to Austin for all of like 40 minutes. Oh my gosh. So I went there with my buddy. <laughs> and um, this is a big job for like the guy that started like Smart Coffee. And it's his whole, oh, cool. yeah. it's his whole big warehouse training session area. So I was like, yeah, okay, let's go do that. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we just went and did that. But you know, my client list is crazy because like George Bush is like one of my clients. Oh, really? And, nice. Yeah. Uh, we actually did the Toyota family. So, like they have a racetrack out in in Argyle we did that for them mm-hmm. we've done like we've done some stupid we've done the biggest <laughs> the most expensive house in Dallas we, we did oh nice yeah yeah so this mansion with another mansion connected to it by a <laughs> like, by a like 3, a 3,000 square foot yeah so this is a 3,000 square foot um, bowling alley over it with a garage and oh my god, you know, like, this is so stupid <laughs> yeah I swear yeah but I mean go ahead and pay me I'll they, had, they had an here. animatronic like water park and nice. the guy that had had built that property, mm-hmm. he was his dentist, and he went to. It only cost him like a thousand sixty four counts of Medicaid fraud to own that. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy because he had like this gold plated toilet, like like in this bowling alley, mm-hmm. and it's like yeah. Well, now he's got like himself a nice little silver one. <laughs> I saw <swear>, right, yeah. <laughs> I had to take a little step back. There, it's like yeah. yeah. I guess you're getting an aluminum toilet now, <laughs> yeah. stainless steel. Yep, yep, and a nice mirror that you can't break too. Yeah, it's so weird. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, the guy That's was, crazy. like, billing people when he was, like, out of town. Wow. It's like, how stupid are you? I swear, right? <laughs> yeah, breaking, like, somebody's going to know I'm breaking yeah. the law. I think this is easily found out that I'm not even in town. There's so much business to do without doing that. And I'm sure you know that, of course. Oh, yeah. I'm always amazed. It's like, yeah. like, like, you see people doing shady stuff, and you're like, why are you doing that? Yeah, because you probably work with a lot of contractors. And like, yeah. There's a lot of con- – uh, I've just heard some, like, horror stories. Oh, my favorite was there was a guy, and he what he was doing was he was going to all the – you know, he go to all the laborers, right, and say, hey, if you work for me on this house and you just charge me labor and material, mm-hmm. when we sell the house, you get a percentage of the profit. Nice. So depending on, like, what percentage of the house your job is, that would be the percentage you would get, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, if you did drywall, you would get maybe, like, 12% of the profit. So, mm-hmm. it would work. Something stupid like that. Some ridiculous sliding scale. Yeah. So, people would get all, like, 
like, oh shit, instead of making like like three or four thousand dollars off this job, I can make like ten grand. And they're like, yeah. yeah, yeah, you could do it. You know, definitely do that. Yeah. So what this jackass does is he goes and um, when it comes time to when the house sells, he mm-hmm. says, okay, meet me over here at my uh-huh. office and I'll write Catch you a check, check right? Yeah. And my lead guy told me about that. I'm like, no, we're not doing that. That sounds stupid. That sounds like the biggest scam ever. Like yeah. something's gonna go wrong on so this. So they wanted you to get in they on it. They wanted me to get on this, right? So I, I like totally ditched this thing. I'm like, I'm not yeah. messing around with that. You've been in too long. He's I've been in I've seen everything. <laughs> so what happened was the guy shows up, right? So um, one of our friends went he went and got involved in it and he said, Yeah, I got my check, it was no problem, but there was an immigration truck right in front of the Oh my in front gosh. of the guy's job. Yeah. So he had basically called <laughs> immigration. So like if you were illegal when he was hoping that everyone else was illegal. Oh you yeah, know? for sure. Yeah. So like <laughs> That's a racket. That's so oh that's messed Oh up, dude, dude, so then that guy ended up they found that guy in a ditch. <laughs> And yeah, he probably like, got the wrong guy, and then he oh, came he back over. Oh, he definitely got the wrong guy. Yeah, <laughs> he came back over, and he had a score to settle there. You know, it's... Uh... Yeah, you don't mess with people's livelihood like no, that, dude. dude. That's it's insane. Like, well, it's like, why would you do that? To make a quick buck, he probably made plenty off of that deal. Anyways. Oh, I'm sure he made plenty, because he wasn't paying anyone any, you know... Yeah. He's paying, getting like a 50% discount right mm-hmm. off the bat, more than likely. And then, and then just kicking him out of the whole thing. Literally like, out call, of the country. They call him like... Call him immigration. It's like, what is wrong with you? That is so messed up, dude. That's wow. beyond messed up. That's oh, wow. <laughs> that's a new. That's a new one for me. That I was diabolical. Like, I was just like, yeah, that sounds pretty stupid. Oh my god. And he was just ex- and um, I asked my guy Ricardo, this, the sheetrock guy. He's like, yeah, I got my money, but I'm legal. He's like, all these other people that weren't legal, you know. Yeah. And then everyone wow. was calling me up and blowing my phone and saying, hey, you know this guy? Had, I was like, yep. Yep, yeah. I figured it well, out. That's what he was counting on. And oh, my gosh, dude. Yeah. yeah that's how you lose business. Right? I've seen some crazy stuff in like, yeah. construction because it's like you get yeah. companies that think they're going to control the entire Metroplex. So they're like giving <laughs> stuff. We're like, why are you working for 10%? Like, what is wrong with you? Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, there's plenty of business in the Metroplex. You are not controlling the whole thing. Yeah, you're not going to just undercut everybody and get yeah, all but you, of the jobs. Yeah, but you get these you big know? companies from Houston and Austin, and they're, mm-hmm. they're going to come out here and show us what, you know. Yeah, no. It's like, why are you allergic to money? Yeah, I swear, yeah, for real. <laughs> I always love those because you'll, like, lose a job by, like, three or $4,000. Mm-hmm. And I'll, like, call whoever whoever owned them. and be like, hey, why is your salesperson selling for $3,000 less? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, I had that house sold for this price, and you guys are too stupid to realize this. Yeah, so. like, you could have got that money. You, yeah. It was your money. You undercut yourself. It was your money, so I don't understand why you guys are doing this. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, just trying to push the envelope, get everything done. Well, they're like, no, it's all about volume. I'm like, I guess so, dude. I'm more I don't, of a quality over quantity kind of Volume guy, people always, like, amaze me in mm-hmm. business because you're like, why? Yeah. And the corners that they'll cut on like, and stuff like that. Like, why are you doing volume? Yeah. <laughs> You're working harder to make less at this point. And I've told people straight up, I'm like, y'all have volume works if everything was a flat line. And yeah. you said, okay, I can, you know, but it's like every time you throw another truck in there, you threw another line up there. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, but people just, <laughs> <laughs> people, know, people yeah. amaze me. They're, they're just fantastic. They're down with that quick buck, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I've been in business for like pretty much all my, yeah, all my life and my my grandfather was an entrepreneur. My mother was an entrepreneur. My oh, great grandfather nice. was like. Hmm. So you kind of got to see how it was done beforehand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing about like one of the reasons that I want to do this podcast is mm-hmm. kind of learn this kind of stuff because I didn't grow up around that. Like, uh, so I grew up in Mena, Arkansas. It's like a little five thousand uh-huh. person yeah. town. The biggest thing there is a Walmart and like a like the airport. Like mm-hmm. you have, there's like two or three jobs to be had and everybody's fighting over them. Otherwise you work at like Taco Bell. Yeah. Right? That's what, that's the way El Paso was too. El Paso oh was like, yeah. I don't doubt that at all. Dude, El Paso sucked when yeah. I was there. Like, <laughs> Cause like I graduated from college like in 90, 99 only cause I just was like drawing out as long as I could. Mm-hmm. But when I was in high school, it was like 92, 93. Mm-hmm. And then you're a kid. So you have no idea the savings and loan scandal, what impact that had on you <laughs> your whole yeah. life, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm like working like at like multiple jobs, and I'm like, this is stupid. Just trying to get like a job was next to impossible. Yeah, and, and then uh, you're not getting paid anything, probably. Yeah. No, you're not getting paid for shit. Yeah. So then you're, you're just kind of like trying to figure out like how to make a living and mm-hmm. go to college with like no. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, thank, thank God, it's like 1993, and there's like I've got a collection of jobs here. Yeah. At one point in time, I had like three jobs, and I still didn't have like close to full time hours. I think I had maybe like. Like twenty five hours. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and it was like working oh like God. six here, six there. Like <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's how it was. <laughs> oh wow! And then so I just decided on like you know what? 
I'm gonna figure something else. I'm definitely here. gonna figure. Well, what happened was I got like I was working at KB Toys and I got like a raise. Mm-hmm. And it was like four twenty five an hour at the time. Oh wow! Yeah. And then uh, it was like four seventy five. Mm-hmm. But I just got raised to like four eighty five. Yeah. So I told my boss, I'm like, hey, am I getting a raise? Mm-hmm. So it's the minimum wage. Ago, they're like, no. I'm like, what? I'm like, this is bullshit. It's like, like, I just yeah. got a raise. We just gave you a <laughs> you raise. You just gave me what a raise, and that was like at the same place, pretty much, you know? Oh, my gosh. Dude. So then I went across the street, went to go work at Olive Garden, started waiting tables, and I mm. figured that, you know, there's no point in knowing what your average salary should be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's what I like about bartending is I, I it's kind of like you get what you put in, you know? Like yeah. You get out of it like, what you put into it. So. And it's like you're your own person, your own, yeah. own business. I remember. <laughs> It was funny. Like you work for somebody, but like at the same time, like you, you're the, yeah. you're the business there. Yeah. Yeah, and then you're just like it's all about what you're able to bring in versus what other people are just. <laughs> yeah. Like the, you have a bad day, it's the your same fault. Table, it'd be a totally different experience, you know. Yeah, and it's like, okay, how do I make my own money? Mm-hmm. And it was funny because I was like, oh, okay, so I, I've waited tables pretty much like all my college career, mm-hmm. and when I moved down here, I was an engineer for Dell Tile. Oh, nice. And so is that what you went to school for? I was uh, actually got an art degree, but then I was like the first person with like a ceramics degree in forever, and I knew oh, like wow. all the chemistry and physics of like ceramics and everything. So mm-hmm. I, I got recruited for that, mm-hmm. did that for about a year and a half, then got all freaked out because George Bush got elected, and they were like, <laughs> "There, he's going to tank the housing market." It's like, no, he's not going to oh, tank the housing gosh. market. You morons! Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have that much control. So over then that. Um, they built like this whole warehouse up, and they had like this like we don't keep material behind we don't we only make what we need because you don't buy cookies and store stockpile cookies yeah, that was their yeah. that was their example mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they start building this warehouse and they start filling up all this thing with tile and they're like yeah they're just buying a bunch of cookies so we're all going to get fired here. I swear, yeah. <laughs> so you the know the price like, of cookies is about to tank brother. <laughs> yeah so like if you had a redundancy like if i had a redundant i had a boss so if you had a boss you basically got laid off that week and then it was like all right fine oh my gosh yeah. so <laughs> they built a warehouse all within that time period of the hanging chad thing and you're like oh, oh my gosh yeah. you're like wow that's really fast you guys are awesome <laughs> <laughs> so then um okay i moved down here mm. and i was gonna go work for this company called color robia doing like uh research and development in color yeah and they got bought out by the germans that's why i didn't have a job so then i went to go I was like, oh, I might as well teach. So I got, like, alternatively certified. Oh, wow. So because I did that, I had to go pay for it. So I was like, oh, I'll just go wait tables for, for that yeah. summer because I didn't have a job anyways. Mm-hmm. So um, I waited tables at Papado's, and I remember telling him that I would, um, looking at how much I was tipping out, and I was like, hey, can I just hire my own staff and just, like, I'm tipping out a ton of money. Why don't yeah. I just get my own guy mm-hmm. as my own busboy? You guys don't pay me anything. And just let me be independent. independent con- they're like, we can't do that. Oh, wow. That's I'm a like, good idea. I'm though, like, why dude? not? It's like yeah. I would have my own staff. Mm-hmm. They would run all my stuff. You they don't even do have to worry about me. You would have to worry about me. I'm just yeah. my own person. That's I less just... paperwork for you, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can't do that. I'm like, I'm already an independent contractor. You just yeah. don't realize it. Wow. That's a trip, dude. Yeah. If every, yeah. If every job worked like that, like if I could just bring in my own like uh, bar back <laughs> and we just figure it out from there. I remember I was working at Applebee's in El Paso and I was like, that sucked. I was like. It was the busiest <laughs> Applebee's in the world. Oh, my gosh. And, um, <laughs> was it smoking at that point, probably? Of course too? it was. Of course, yeah. So it was the busiest <laughs> Applebee's in the world, and it was, like, just nonstop. Like, you would run your ass off. And I had top sales. And Applebee's has them and, deals, dude. And then I was, like, looking at my – but you would get, like, 10% because it was, like, by the – it was by close enough to the Indian reservation, so you would have all the people coming from Speaking Rock. Yeah. And they're not going to tip you because that was going to be the money that was going to make them. Yeah, they don't have the money to do it, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So then you, know, you would get like your 10%. Mm-hmm. And then I looked at how much I was tipping out, and I was like, wow, I tipped out more than I paid in rent. Wow. And utilities and all my expenses. And I told my boss, I'm like, hey, I'm top sales all the time, and why am I tipping out like a. Like twelve hundred dollars, yeah. And this is twelve hundred dollars in like nineteen ninety, oh, nineteen ninety five money. So Ooh. that's what is the equivalent of that? I'd <laughs> say like twenty five hundred, probably. No, three? not that much. No? Let's see. Uh, let's let's do that math real quick. Nineteen ninety three. That's but crazy. yeah. So it was like tipped out a ton of money, right? Yeah. Twelve hundred in nineteen ninety three. Let's see what would the the nineteen ninety. Let's call it nineteen hundred. Let's see. Oh wow. It was uh, twenty four hundred dollars. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah so I could have first. Time. I could have bought a house. Yeah. Holy I crap. Holy shit. That's you like, could have been paying like a full mortgage. Like, I could have been buying. I could have had my own mortgage. You know. So Jeez. it was like one of those things. It's like, and you know, your bus boy would leave at like eight, and then oh, you're yeah. there till three, and you're like, well, okay, thanks. Yeah. For- 
Thanks for nothing, basically. Because we all know, like, at a place like that, like, from 10 or 11 on, it's just... Like, you're on your own. Yeah, and it's and, nuts, dude. That's when it gets busy. Yeah, Everything you get all the closed. weird stuff that happens. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a buddy of mine, Jeff. He wants to, he wants me to start a podcast, and it's like a uh-huh. restaurant horror stories. Oh, man, I got a million. Just the stuff, like, all that weird stuff that happens, yeah. Oh, my all-time <laughs> favorite was there was this guy, and... um. Cut him off because he was like stupid drunk. Yeah, and he grabbed my ass. He's like, I'm, "You're gonna still serve me?" I'm like, "I'm not serving you." And he's like, "Just being like, like, just like, belligerent. just belligerent and like every homophobic slur you could think of, oh he's throwing gosh. at me." And it's like, and when he slapped, when he grabbed my ass, he's like, "You're gonna serve me?" And I'm like, "No, I am yeah. not. I'm about to kick your ass." Here. I swear. Yeah. And then he slaps. He's like, "You're gonna serve me, bitch!" And he slapped me. And oh. then he. I'm about to like rush him, and his friends like, "No, dude, he gets that way." He's yeah, just, and he's, "I'm sorry, man." And I'm oh like, "I'm gosh. about to rush. I'm about get this to fucking be, guy out of here. Dude. I'm about to beat this fucker." Just get know? him out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he gets in a car by himself, mm-hmm. and, he, and I was like, "You know, he said he has a designated driver. Probably shouldn't be driving right shouldn't now." Be driving. Buddy. There's a police station right down the street. Nice. Like it was like literally from there to there. Yeah, and you had to go on, like this big thing with it because it was like you you couldn't make a U turn, so you had to go at least like. It took you about like four minutes just to get to back on the highway. <laughs> yeah. So I called the cops and I reported him. And mm-hmm. then I said, yeah, I just served this guy. He's about leaving this. This is what car he is. This is his license plate. You need to get on him right now because he's way past intoxication. He told me he had a designated driver. Mm-hmm. And, and he still got cut off. And he got cut off. I mm-hmm. cut him off. He assaulted me and he took off. Yeah. And so look out the window and I see the, see him going there and he's like swerving all over and the oh cops are God. right behind him and I see him get pulled over. I was like, <laughs> this is like the best moment nice of my life. Nice little satisfaction on top so of that. So he's there yeah. right across the street and I'm like looking and he's like getting handcuffed and as soon as he gets handcuffed I go right outside I'm like, fuck you, dude! Yes! Nice, <laughs> like, dude. Like, who's yes. the bitch now? Oh my God, that's awesome, dude. And then my, I got real so good for that. <laughs> oh, oh my I was God. in so much trouble for that. What? For Wait, for which part? Uh, for running out there and calling him a bitch. Uh, well, I mean, I guess, but I yeah, was like, I mean, I was like, that's a human thing. You had to do that. I was dude. like, <laughs> I was like, what a stupid adventure uh, this is. This is like the dumbest work adventure <laughs> ever. And you're like, <laughs> that's so cool, dude. So that's what that's what I like about people that have worked in the service industry is like they learn like that people are just fucking crazy, dude. And then you're also in the construction business, and you also you said you work a little bit in government and stuff like, oh, or you have ties to or government. something like that. Yeah. So let me do like an inventory of like what all do you have going on right now, or what all have you been involved? in? It's funny because I was talking to my uh, my lead guy when I was driving over here. Mm-hmm. So boss, you keep throwing stuff on your plate because i say yeah i'm gonna do this podcast he's like what don't you do in a day and i'm like i don't know i swear right yeah is this a new one is this, is this your first podcast no i've done them before oh nice i okay, did cool. one for um i've done like three of them yeah yeah because i've had like you you seem very relaxed and like mm-hmm. it seems like some people have on their like we eventually get to the point but like at first they like it oh, takes a little know. coaxing out you know but but you came out guns blazing and i really well, it's like you it. learned to like just do these things yeah, you can just, just say whatever you want it's who gives a shit like who's gonna like you know yeah right i don't have I that remember, many followers i remember the first time i was doing one i was like oh, i'm nervous you know mm-hmm. and it was during during zoom because it's during covid so i was like oh yeah dude if i if i have to do a zoom meeting i'm like fuck you i'm not gonna do a zoom meeting <laughs> <laughs> dude oh yeah so let's do let's do this in okay let's see let's on. see what i've done okay um so you used to wait tables okay yeah waited tables was a ta at, at utep um Worked at a toy store. I worked at two toy stores. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, I worked at Express as a stock boy, which was a shitty job. Yeah. You see what else have we done? Wait, Express suit or? The Express, uh, the clothing store. Oh, okay. Yeah, It was yeah. like one of my many jobs. Yeah. I worked at Things Remembered, which was kind of funny. Things Remembered. It was like that. It was like the moment. Like, like a novelty know. kind of a store? Kind like, of. Like yeah. you get like engraved mugs or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. It was like one of those like, oh, you're hiring? Okay, sure. I'll take it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, just pay me. I'll do whatever you want. Okay, I worked at Blockbuster Music. Nice. I worked at, yeah, I worked at, what else? I worked at Lionel Toys. Mm-hmm. I worked at KB Toys. <laughs> so I worked at Dell Tile. Yeah. Taught it through at four different schools. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Yeah. Taught chemistry, physics, biology, <laughs> uh, yeah. art. Nice. It was funny because I was like an art teacher, and this yeah. one teacher's like, 
what do you know? You're just yard teacher. And I'm like, oh, straight up, fuck you. Right I now. swear, yeah, straight for real. Up, don't right? even you're, get you're, me you're, Go fuck yeah. yourself right now. <laughs> so then <laughs> you get, when you get, when you get a, once you're certified, you can get certified in anything, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you could just go get, as long as you have that first one, you can go take whatever test you want. Yeah. You don't have so, to take the big test. You just take the little ones. Yeah, you take those specialization mm-hmm. ones. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, fuck this bitch. So I went yeah. to go get like a, <laughs> I went and got like the generalist for like first through, it's like there's generalist uh, first through K, uh, K through four, mm-hmm. then there's f- fifth through six, seventh through eighth, and then there's like all levels. All high school. Or high school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the hardest one is like high school uh, science because high school science is like everything. I mean, yeah, it's chemistry, dude. physics, biology, oh, microbiology, wow. um, mm-hmm astrophysics like oh, jesus yeah it's oh so you just went for dude, broke it was yeah. like it, was, it went for broke and i was like <laughs> i was so pissed because i got like the, the i got like a 71 on that and uh-huh. i was like oh. is that the passing grade on it that was barely passing but okay it was like, i mean you got the certificate nobody's gonna look at it yeah no one's gonna look at it but i remember the first time i took it i got like a 68 i was so mad i was like oh, oh. dude yeah I well like, i mean oh. it being that broad dude that's crazy it was super broad might as well like, be wait. taking like the act again dude Oh yeah, but it was like all these sciences and like who the hell knows like like <laughs> like biochemistry like I kind of get this yeah like I feel like I've done this before no right? I've never done this <laughs> I've never done any of this I okay. taught myself all this stuff so you're using like, like you're just going by the multiple choice trying to figure it out no probably. I just like studied like a mother there like, you go nice you ever yeah. see like that Catch Me If You Can movie with like uh, Tom Hanks about that um, guy that like. Does a bunch of identity theft back in the like the sixties. No, I don't think I've seen that. One. Well, anyways, yeah. the guy gets he's a lawyer, right? Mm-hmm. And he gets arrested by the FBI, and then he, and he's like, "How did you, uh, how did you pass? How did you get your bar certificate? How did you fake that?" And he's like, "I studied." Yeah, right. I just put in. I the just work. studied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can pass anything if you, you just, just yeah. look at the right information. Yeah, I just thought it was funny. I just that's thought it was crazy. Like, I was like, "Well, why not?" You know, it might yeah. come in handy. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, that would be that's a hard one right there. Yeah. And then I got tired of like teaching because it's like you're like if you have to like look at kids like like, like. dude I did uh, so I did the uh, orientation to teaching or uh, mm-hmm. the STEM teach whenever I was in college yeah. for a little bit and like it's crazy what these kids don't know like they'll ask you questions that you're like if a grown man asked me that like I would call you an idiot but like I can't like you I know that you actually don't know but like it's also kind of the way that you asked me to but like I can't I can't talk shit to you because you're a little kid. <laughs> yeah. What amazes me now is like how. When I was teaching, mm-hmm. if you disciplined a kid, you got in more trouble than the kid got for disciplining the kid. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. I taught at Carter, which is like the worst school in Arlington. Yeah, okay, it's like yeah. infamously. Yeah. <laughs> like, you taught at Carter? It's like you might as well got like a badge of honor for teaching there and they <laughs> give you like a purple heart. Yeah. Like the shitty. <laughs> and did your time. What yeah. sucks, dude, is like I had gotten a, like the academy in Irving had just opened up and they wanted me to teach like computer graphics and everything. And I was like, I don't know shit about that, but I would have learned it during the summer. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they offered me that job but I had signed over at Carter and I'm like oh man they already signed at Carter and I remember the lady that had told me about that she's like now it might be a challenge because these kids but you're Hispanic and they need a good Hispanic role model and I'm like okay. uh, yeah. sure yeah. I come from El Paso right Yeah, El Paso is a majority mi- minority city right mm-hmm. so like Coming down here was kind of a culture shock because it's like you never experienced any kind of like racism and yeah. you just saw like Hispanic. everybody's in Dude, the same well, his, boat. Well, it was, yeah, everyone's in the same boat. You have a military base. You know, I heard the N word maybe three times in my life, and someone got their ass kicked. And the guy who, who said it would be on the ground, but it wasn't the person he said it to. It was somebody else. Like one somebody of the other stepped guys. in for him. Yeah, yeah, they'd be like, no, dude, you know, yeah, we're not having we're this not having shit, this right. Yeah. So, so it was like the whole concept of like racism like completely foreign to me like what that's wild dude yeah like you would hear people talk shit about white people it was like ahead of the top <laughs> that's <laughs> that's ahead of the awesome. curve okay yeah <laughs> but <laughs> yeah but so like you're expect I'm expecting like you know like my grandparents like live in a kind of rough neighborhood I grew up in that for a little bit I mean, you know but we went to Catholic schools so we never even knew oh right yeah, like yeah. I didn't I didn't know any of these kids so I went to high school and I like mm-hmm. met them on the bus and I'm like you guys are stupid. <laughs> oh no <laughs> you know the guy that hits you in the back of the head for this being is a schoolboy. this what Jen Ed is over here like <laughs> yeah then I was like reading like I was like reading an article the other day mm. about like there was a gang in El Paso called Los Fatherless and my grandmother lives like they have this giant house like on Glenwood and there's a Glenwood gang and they was like made this book and I'm like why 
What, like their like their Bible or something? Or no, we made a book like about gangs of El Paso. Oh, like, wow. Glenwood gang. It's like those guys. Those guys are a joke. But I oh guess, my gosh, I yeah. guess someone felt the need like, to write. I think it. I met those guys. In well, high I went school. to high school with them. I thought they were done <laughs> dildos. But I, guess, <laughs> I mean, those guys. I'm not real. I don't know why you'd be afraid of them. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. I mean, back in the actually, what happened in that neighborhood? It was. Uh, my great grandfather started that bar. It was like around 19, like the Mexican Revolution happened, and there was a place called uh, Matador, mm-hmm. and it was like maybe about a mile away from where my grandfather's built like this giant fortress of a house. Yeah, <laughs> and he had a bar and everything. So what he was doing was he was taking advantage of all the all the mercenaries that were getting paid in gold. <laughs> they would come and nice. they spend their paycheck over at my grandfather's bar yeah. and my great grandfather's What year bar. range would you say Probably this like is? 19, like early 1900s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, well, you know, whenever the Mexican Revolution was. Mm-hmm. Dude, Mexican Revolution in El Paso was insane because, like, you would go, like, the Franklin Mountains mm-hmm. would have, like, these viewing areas. Oh, wow. And you would just sit up there and you would watch the battles. <laughs> Dope, dude. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was like, okay, that's kind of weird. They but, still do those reenactments? Oh, uh, no. Oh, well, no yeah, one cares about that over there. I mean, war is so bad off that it'd be like, I remember once we, um, at, in college, we were going to do this project where you had to do something where you would um, influence part of the Mexico border. Mm-hmm. And what we were going to do was we were going to take a big thing of orange paint and pour it down the street. Uh-huh. And then we went down there and met the people there. And we're like, well, we're such dickheads for thinking. I mean, they have like, oh, no, yeah. they have these houses with like, I remember this one guy had all these TV tubes on top of the house holding the roof down. And you're like, oh, wow. oh man, we are horrible people. Oh, no. Yeah, we can't do this. So what we ended up doing is we ended up like painting like, we ended up painting like his wall. Oh, like nice. bright orange so you would see it from the university from like our studios and everything. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of cool. I mean, we did something nice and fixed up some stuff and... Yeah, that's cool. Okay, yeah. So you like, got wow. there and you're like, okay, we okay, should we're probably dickhead. do something We nice. should <laughs> not pour paint down this oh hill. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> like, first of all, how much paint is it going to take to pour down this hill? Second of all, why, why are we going to be this type of dickheads? Yeah, right. Like, it's kind of a waste. Of like, we're school, assholes. Yeah. <laughs> like, why are we doing this? <laughs> but you're young, you know, it happens. Yeah. You know, you're stupid. But it's, at least you have the wherewithal to, you know, yeah, recognize it was like that one of those time. things that, you know, you're... Yeah, you're young. You know, it was it was in theory like it was a fun idea probably, but yeah, in, in practicality, that think. was probably about as good as an idea where we were doing a group project and we were supposed to like we were going to do about all the murders in Mexico. Like mm-hmm. there was a bunch of like back in the '90s, they were mur- this one bus driver was killing all these women from the from the the twin plants. Mm-hmm. So the twin plants were basically you had a factory here in America and you had a factory in Mexico, and they would just run right some material back and border. forth, right? Okay. Yeah. So this guy, I was a bus driver, and he would pick up these girls, and he was murdering them. And yeah. uh, we were going to place a Barbie doll at all these spots where they were at, and then we started driving around. We're like, oh, dude, we are stupid for doing this because yeah. we're going to get killed. Oh, no. We're yeah. definitely going to get murdered. We shouldn't even be here right now, dude. <laughs> like, we're like, I'm in way over my element yeah. on this one. <laughs> so well, then we started, like, taking the Barbie dolls and, like, recreating these murders of, mm-hmm. like, these Barbie dolls, and we figured out that you can make, like, guts with... Uh, like jello and stuff like that yeah, and right. string and it was like really like and you know we took pictures of them and we're like oh this is kind of stupid but then our professor is like let's um do the slides in the slide library right so it's like a movie theater type environment and you're putting yeah. like your slides in there and then you're watching what you made and we're like this is rough <laughs> uh, i'm like I don't ever want to see this body at work again. Oh, no. And there was, yeah. like, five of us that made these, like, yeah. Barbie murder videos. Like, oh, no. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> we're going to hell. I swear, can we find these? Can we get these on YouTube? Or I something? really <laughs> wish if I got so I'm, so glad, not, I'm but... so glad YouTube. <laughs> Dude, they were, like, <clears throat> like, they were pretty rough. Oh, wow. And yeah. then you're like, oh, this girl got caught in the They found her body in the car, so let's make the Barbie in the car, like, the trunk of a car. And we're like, we're going to hell. Oh no, yeah. We're going to hell. And it was like <laughs> So you're in the slide library. It was supposed to be like a regular thing, so it'd be something about this big. Back mm-hmm. in nineteen ninety three technology would have been blurry as hell. Yeah. But you go do it. It's slide the library thing that you click through with yeah. the little yeah, the little pictures in it. But like in nineteen ninety three the slide library had like an actual projector projector that you yeah. would put the slides in and it was like crystal clear like <laughs> yeah. hd and you would get details you wouldn't see like on a small photo whenever you were doing it initially like you couldn't see like half these details and then so you're like finally seeing this like body of work and you're like 
Wow. I'm going. This might be a little more graphic like, than we intended. <laughs> like this one girl started crying, and then like a bunch of girls wouldn't talk to us ever again. Oh. And they were like, "We're going to hell." Oh Jesus! Yeah. Well, that's college, you know. That's college. <laughs> so that was, this is so you were going through the. Uh, we were at like your teaching spot. Oh so yeah, I, so I, I was need teaching. To figure out, like where. You ended up like so. You decided to go into the entrepreneurial side. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I was like, well, first of all, teaching was kind of depressing me because I knew exactly how much money I was making. Yeah, and then um, I decided I wanted to work for Funimation, so my buddy had a comic book store, so I took it over. Comic oh, book yeah. anime store back in like two thousand mm-hmm. before everything was like on streaming and everything, so they would rent stuff. And then he had this business partner that was all into Magic the Gathering, which is probably the worst business investment you could ever get into right yeah <laughs> I, I my stepdad was into that we had a whole dude, book of them dude, yeah. it's like you want to have a business nightmare right there mm-hmm. like well have, the guy that had it he probably made a killing and then got the hell out no of it, nobody mm-hmm. made a killing on that because what would happen is guys would take a lot <laughs> of pride in mm-hmm. not spending any money at the store so they would go and have a tournament over there and Nobody would buy anything we had a coke machine that would pay the rent like we would do Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments and Pokemon tournaments and mm-hmm. that would I mean, that, that part of money, quarters, right? Yeah. So you would be, like, killing it on that side, right? Because mm-hmm. parents are buying their kids these cute little cards and everything. Yeah. And then you have these man boys, you know, yeah. these 400-pound man <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, these 400-pound man got boys. got their backwards and the, flat bills and their glasses. Oh, God, and dude. beards, probably. Folding chairs did not stand a chance. Oh, no. <laughs> like, I shit you not, dude. We went oh, through wow. so many folding oh, chairs. Oh, God. That's like and that exact like demographic that I imagine when I think of magic. <laughs> it, it, remember that guy that was going around and taking pictures of people's butt cracks at the magic show? And then he got like, banned from those? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it was like, some, like a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. And he was just like doing the peace sign by everyone's butt. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, that's what was happening over there. It was like these... these and. And you're like, we're a part of this. Oh, my God, we're a part of this. And then, like, you go, like, every Friday, you'd buy, like, I mean, every Monday, you'd end up buying, like, four chairs because someone broke these chairs. Oh, my gosh. So yeah. I had his buddy, Ken, who actually got me in the spray foam side. Mm-hmm. And um, we went and we built these things. We were calling them the coffins. Like, they were this heavy-duty, like, like a 2 by 12 base of, like, frame for for like these benches and everything mm-hmm. and we tested them out by driving my car on them to see oh, if nice. they could hold my car up then it was fine yeah <laughs> so and eventually they broke them i was like how did you kind of break these it held a car, support up? a car wow so you built specialized chairs for we're like this, this giant exact bench deal. i mean like these heavy dude these benches weighed like 300 pounds <laughs> like it took like four of us to move them yeah and it was like <laughs> jeez dude <laughs> It was just amazing. It was, like, one of those things. But these guys would, like, spend, like... I remember once I was, like... Went to go get the drill positive at, like, 12, and everybody was still there. Mm-hmm. And then I was opened it up for the Magic... For the Yu-Gi-Oh! show. Mm-hmm. For the Yu-Gi-Oh! kids. At, like, 10, and they were still there. And it started, like, at, like, 8 o'clock the night before. Oh, wow. Like, you guys have been here for 13 hours. Yo. Like, like, 15 hours? That's like a Dungeons & Dragons. It's like, what are y'all... Dude? It's like... What, like, what campaign are you on right now, bro? But then they, like, <laughs> the whole place was just trashed because they would, like, oh God, somebody yeah. thought it was a good idea to go through the penny stuff and just throw all the stuff on the floor. And it was like, wow. There was this guy we used to call him a tumbo. He was this monster of a man that was all tattooed and he would smoke outside the storefront. Mm. And you'd see parents come in and they would see this monster of a man that was all tattooed and pierced before mm. tattoo and pierce was a thing. Right, yeah. And they would just turn right around and you're like, Ah, like I needed them to come in here though. Oh, like, these guys pay my rent. These yeah. guys pay my rent. And you are doing nothing for me. So you have the magic <laughs> card, and then there's a hierarchy of nerd. I found out there's like the magic card people were like the lowest because right. they were like the ones that were like, <laughs> oh god, they were just awful. Yeah. Then you had the anime kids, and then you had the comic people, right? Okay, yeah. So you have these three these three things in this store, right? Mm-hmm. And then you had the Yu Gi Oh and the I love those kids. Those guys were the best, right? Nice, like Yu Gi Oh. And then we and had then... like we had Xboxes that were connected. We'd all play Halo, so we had the Halo yep. room and then before it was like all land together and that was mm-hmm. always good that was those guys were always good yeah but the magic players killed everything oh my gosh yeah i mean because they smell terrible i yeah. remember dude i remember once there was this kid bell mm-hmm. and i said bell i will pay you ten dollars to free breeze that guy because <laughs> yeah. dude this guy smelled like death i thought it was like if you said that guy died oh and there's like rotting flesh there yeah i would be like 
He's probably got like the folds, you know, with the stuff it's in awful. it. It's awful. Yeah, so Val went and sprayed the kid down. And, oh my god. And, um, yeah. and the guy laughed. It was like, if somebody sprayed me down with Febreze. I would take that as a sign. I would some sort. never be seen in public again. No way. I would dude. be at the gym. I'd be like, oh my god. Like, oh I would god, go home and take a shower. I would shoot myself. Maybe? I would yeah. be like, that'd be my last life on it. Oh like, my like, gosh, I can't dude. live like this. Yeah. <laughs> Someone Febrezed me. Yeah. There was a grown man somewhere in DFW that got Febrezed by a. An eleven-year-old boy, mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a grown like, man. Yeah, that's so crazy. It's like you got Febreze by a kid. Yeah, and you like you still sat there. You deserved it's it. Like you didn't fucker. leave. Yeah. <laughs> he just laughed and he kept playing. He kept playing. Oh it was like, God. dude, you got Febreze, and it was like just amazing because it was like, <laughs> and it's all like kind of the same type. Uh huh. But so the magic players would run everyone off because they would go to the, they would either hit on the little girls like the girls that were buying like. Like renting anime, mm-hmm. they would try to make them all their girls. Those little like pixie girls, like yeah, little cute pixie girls, yeah. and then like so, or they or like if a guy was renting, why are you in those little Japanese cartoons, mm. you know? And you're like, dude, you are playing a card game. You're literally playing magic. Like I, you are I playing can't magic say it any different. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like no offense to magic, so so I'm right, sure yeah. it's I'm sure it's a fantastic and fabulous game. Oh, for sure, I'm sure there's I, I'm that sure there's great people that play yeah. it, but you know, unfortunately, you not had the, the Shotokan. Yeah, you had the circa bad. 19 <laughs> not, like early turn of the century. Yeah, 2003, yeah. 2004. Mm-hmm. So you were, so this is you kind of in like the would you call yeah this so I was in there so then I went yeah. to work at Funimation mm-hmm. and Funimation was a complete clusterfuck because it was like and this is the Funimation that is like, still yeah now. They, yeah and they yeah I was like have they gotten their shit together or uh, you don't know <laughs> what did you what did you do for them I did re- I did toy and video game licensing oh, okay and. So kind of on the legal side, mm-hmm. it sounds like, yeah. Yeah, so I'd do all their approvals for stuff, and mm-hmm. you'd have people sculpting stuff. I remember once I had to watch, like, all of, like, the Dragon Ball Z cell saga, like, in Fast Forward, trying to find Piccolo doing some special move. Nice. And I watched it at, like, eight times speed to see it, and it never happened. And this guy had done all the sculpting, and I'm like, like where wait. Is it? Where did you get this image from? And he's like, oh, I got it from a website. And it was, like, some kid's fan website. It's like, dude. You sculpted something on your company dime based off a kid's website. Yeah, like if he had the wherewithal to sue you, you'd have like, a bad time. Not right? even that, dude. It's like the Japanese would not approve. Like, oh yeah. Like if it's like say for example, like if this was the wrong color, like they would circle like sections, and they would send you a fax. And you're like, wait, what's what's going on here? Why yeah. are you sending me a fax first of all? It's like <laughs> right. email. Yeah. But, but then you try to figure out why they didn't like it based mm-hmm. off a of fax. Oh, Jesus. So then you had to figure that out, and you have to like call the Japanese guys, mm-hmm. and you have to like wait till like. Do you speak any Japanese? No, you'd have to wait till like <laughs> the morning. You'd have to like get there like super. <laughs> you either stay super late or get there super early so you can call them and ask them. And um, I knew how to talk to them. I was like the only one that really knew how to ex- how to express stuff to the Japanese people because they always approve all my stuff. Yeah, but like the rest, like they didn't have any like. Tea, tea books or anything, so they had like no mock ups of any characters. I'm oh, like, wow. Why, how are you guys doing this? Yeah, what the hell? It's like, we have this at my comic store. They're like, well, where do you get these at? Like, my comic store? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, we're doing business. I guess we're just I doing just, business. I correctly. don't know why. Don't... Why do we have this Dragon Ball style guy? You guys don't have this Dragon Ball style guy. I don't know. How, how did this happen? Like, you're you're a big company, are you? You said? <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, this is like where I mean, everything just I mean, to their defense, everything just had just started. So. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So they're still so trying to it, it was yeah. brand new. So, well, you know, yeah. again, you know, I'm sorry if I'm bad mouthing. <laughs> no, I mean, your everything company, in the early stages, it was like early stages. Yeah, I mean, there's like setbacks. everything's like confusing, yeah. And this was right whenever I mean, like, I mean, this is the like internet's coming around, and like, oh, yeah, there was like nothing, that. nothing. Like, it was like you're still like dial up here, yeah. Oh, Jesus, yeah, like it was like still like you're like grabbing images. That's there. why they were faxing, They're like, this is just faster, and we know how it works. <laughs> That's what the Japanese do, nice. they still fax to this day, which is amazing. Wow, like they're just like that archaic technology, but yeah, it doesn't seem, yeah, okay, interesting. So, we did that, and then. Um, that didn't last long because it was like no one ever trained you, so you were de- you were bound to get fired. They fired. Yeah, because like, you don't know what you're dude, doing. Dude, they fired they all of us. They don't know what you're doing. They like there was like seven of us that got hired, and seven of us got fired. And it was like, <laughs> like oh, thanks. Yeah. And I was I was like kind of fun saw, while it lasted, I guess. I saw that happening. I saw this <laughs> about to happen. Oh my gosh, yeah. But so you leave there, and then I leave there. Like, um, 
went to wait tables for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, what else did I do that? That was weird. That was a weird time period. Yeah. Cause How old are you at this point? Like you like probably mid about, late twenties. Probably about like twenty seven. Okay. Yeah. Twenty seven, maybe twenty eight. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Young. Yeah. You know. And um. Yeah, so I did that, and I went to go teach for a little bit. Sucked, and then yeah. <laughs> okay. um, my buddy Ken, I worked with him at Papados, and he was he had designed like this. This old Datsun hatchback, and he turned it into like this camping mobile. He had GPS before GPS was a thing. He ran oh, nice. racing in Baja, and to this day, I think Ken was trying to kill himself in the most coolest way possible because right, he would do yeah. like these weird adventures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he raced like this car in Baja, and um, didn't hear from him for a little bit because I found out he got the car broke down in Mexico, and then he was like on a fishing boat for a while. <laughs> wow! And, yeah. then, and then he was like doing tourism stuff and all that stuff. So then, whoa, came back when his dad started working in spray foam, and then he's like, "Hey, do you want to?" He's all this guy I'm working for. Um, he wants to sell me this company. I don't know shit about business. I know you know about business. I like you. I'd rather work with you than anyone yeah. else. And I thought he was always like, mm -hmm. I mean, he's like ten years younger than me. He was a good kid. Yeah. And um, so got into it learned spent like a year on the crew like just what kind of company is that a spray um it was a spray foam company it was just okay. an installation company yeah spent a year on a crew and if I, if I was my own employee I would definitely would have fired me a long time ago but I learned <laughs> everything I could have learned in that time there period. you go okay yeah I mean I could take apart like equipment and, mm -hmm. and troubleshoot and all that. okay yeah. so from there you know just because I had that experience so you know I became pretty quick like pretty like not top in my field but i know enough to like be really 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 dangerous yeah like i probably have like one i'm probably like one of the most knowledgeable people in the industry or was back way back when right yeah there's all these like whiz kids out here that you know yeah what they do <laughs> well no it's just like the whole industry kind of stagnated there's nothing like new or innovating oh, anymore there's no so new technology so there by the time that i mean like the same gun we're using is a gun that came out like 15 years ago and oh, like, wow, top okay. of the line and you're like wow yeah like i hate going to the trade shows because you go to the i don't even bother cause it's the, the same thing. shit all the time oh, it's depressing <laughs> oh, no. like, how is this industry not advanced oh my gosh yeah like, does industry stays stagnant all the time yeah wow that's interesting yeah but i mean so it, it works the way that it works it works the way it works it, um it goes, chemistry yeah. goes weird i mean i could if you called me up right now and said hey i'm having this problem i'd say do xxxx and this yeah. will fix it mm -hmm. but it's just it's just stagnated industry i mean okay. there's not i mean you've hit the point the peak of of innovation mm -hmm. so like right now i'm um I'm like talking with my buddy who's doing like this phase change material, which is like basically like these pa like Capri Sun like packets that freeze like 80 degrees, and then when they get hot, they absorb a ton of heat. Oh wow! And then they freeze back at like 80 degrees, so okay, it absorbs a ton of energy and wow. pretty efficient stuff. Yeah, but it's oh, kind of interesting. Cool. Okay, so that's like that might be like some of the that would be the <laughs> new, that would be that the new thing. In. Yeah, that's that's, awesome, that's what's dude. kind of getting me interested in that. Okay. But yeah. then, you know, in the meantime, you know, I start writing all these spreadsheets so I can, you know, figure out all my stuff out because I was like, I could do the same four hours of work for every quote or yeah. I could just figure out what I'm doing here. So I wrote like this Excel spreadsheet that does kinda all Kind of like, like you just kind of like figured out an algorithm or like. Well, I just figured, okay, X, okay, I need to know this. And then this times 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 this. Yeah. And it does like something like. I think it was like 36 calculations. Oh, okay. Oh, so well. you only enter like five numbers and it figures out everything for you. Nice. Okay, yeah. So I did that and then I was like, okay, well, now I'm bored. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> so like, now oh, you're running this company that oh boy. can almost run itself there. Like, yeah. oh, wow, I can spend most of my time driving. Nice, okay, yeah. I think like last, I've been painting this mural over at Richardson for like 45 days. Yeah. And How big is this thing? It's like 180 foot long by Ooh. 20 foot tall. Yeah, geez. It, and it's yeah. just like the people in the community. So now it's like you're trying to get like this, like no face style and like no shading or anything. So it's just like these like just gestures of people. Okay. Like kind of a silhouette, but a little bit more involved in that. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, like, a, like almost like a shadow kind, kind of, of no, kind there. of like those like Google people, but with like a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like the, like not like so figures, not so cartoony, but you're getting the gestures of people mm. and I'm getting all the staff and people and that work there. Mm. And then what's kind of cool is that people will walk, like the staff will walk by and like, Hey, that's that person. Oh, that's, that's that, like that person. Yeah, that's that, like oh, that's that person. Yeah. You got them. Nice. Yeah. But it's, so it's like, 
Like, yeah. <laughs> there's like no template or nothing. You could just say, okay, this is X is X. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing about art is like that you can't like you can't if I was, automate that task. Well, almost. yeah, because yeah. what we were going to do initially was we were going to do like 200 silhouettes, and I would just kind of stencil and just. Yeah. Flip the stencil backwards every now and then. And then spray or, it. Or I would have made like nine or ten different, different stencils and mm-hmm. just called it a day. Yeah. And then it would look like a little cookie cutter, like ten people, ten people, ten people down the line. There. Yeah. But what's kind of cool about doing that, though, is it gives me, um, like, I have a problem with letting go of my baby. So then I kind of let my baby go and let my let Cedric run this over here in Bedford and her. So I'll be over at Richardson. Mm-hmm. And then Patty works at the Bedford location. So she's running that with him. Mm-hmm. And then on the spray foam side, let Raul do whatever he needs to do. And it's just, yeah. and it's crazy because I'm like, I'm not working really full time for myself, but it's like, I still. Well, you have your hands in different yeah, things. Yeah, but, but it's, it's crazy because it's like you, because I'm doing all this charity work and I'm not getting paid to do the mural. I'm just doing it because oh, cool. it will fund yeah. everything else for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I don't ever take a salary from this. In fact, I put like a lot of money into doing this because it's important because yeah. it's the community. Mm-hmm. And so what does this mural mean to the community? Like, what um, is the... It's basically like all the people of the community that go to that. It's like, so Network is like our Six Stones over here. So it's like they're... What's Six Stones? Six Stones is like a, a community organization. So what they're doing is that they're okay. feeding the community and they've got like, we're doing an art program over there. Mm-hmm. And so like, this is like the mural. And then I started adding these little bubbles of Oh, nice. People. Okay. Like thoughts and stuff. Yeah, what they're, what they're talking about. And then that's pregnant rat for some reason $12. Pregnant, $12. I think like how it said it's single $12, like. yeah it's a single pregnant rat and so like oh, okay cool yeah but like like there's a kid losing his balloon and then oh, no, thinks yeah. Superman for rescuing the balloon there you go nice so you're like creating these little vignettes and you're oh, that's cool you kind of make like a little storyline out of it yeah, yeah so it's kind of it's good to kind of play with it but it's kind of cool like this one's kind of cool because this is like the special needs uh, mm-hmm. girl that's a strong woman so she has like Oh, nice. And then yeah. she saw that because she just was, like, pushing this cart. Mm-hmm. And I snapped a picture of her. Mm-hmm. I said, come on, let's be in the mural. And she's like, what's your pose? And she's a strong woman. Nice. And so I put, you know, have her lifting her weights and all mm-hmm. that. And she saw that because her coordinator brought her by. And she's like, oh, that's me. Nice. That's me, strong lady. And she's, she's doing the whole pose. And I'm like, oh, my God, I love this experience. That is awesome, dude. It's, like, the yeah. best experience ever because she's so stoked about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the only like grat- like gratification that you're getting out of it is oh, like the people's reaction. And, like, well, what's what kind of cool is them. that you know I'm over there like I've been there for like so long. I'm like part of the staff and I'm almost done. So I that's why I started adding these thought bubbles because I'm like I have to do something. Like I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave this yet. So, like, <laughs> like that's the first guy I met over there, Jim, and he's like super mm-hmm. cool and Alberto, and then you know nice. Just, he's thinking about camping. He's thinking about fishing. Is yep. that what that is? Okay. Well, nice. that was like the first one we painted, and we didn't have the style yet. When it, so he's like the most wooden of them all. But yeah, <laughs> then it's kind of cool because then you get like the whole when you start like lining him up and you know getting the people that belong to those pictures, like mm-hmm. like this little girl right here. <laughs> Oh, nice! That is cute, dude. So yeah. you just layer it out there. Little girl with the with the hands up, standing next to it, doing the pose. That's so cute, dude. Yeah, yeah. So. And she just probably walked by, saw that, and was like, "Yeah, That's she's me. one of the kids in classes. She gives me like she's a little brat, but I love her." Oh, right, of course, yeah. You know, <laughs> she's a little girl. They're all kind of mean, but it's kind of it's kind of cool because you do these things, and it's just far more interesting than what I was gonna do, anyways. You know? Right? Yeah. Oh, you and just then you driving back and forth. From yeah, somewhere then you to somewhere. The, but you know, it's like before. It's like I was like so like. I gotta focus on business. I gotta focus on business, and then you just kind of do this. And this summer. is after you started the uh, the, um, what, the insulation so, business. Oh yeah, I mean this is like I mean the, we're like, so were you like all in on the insulation for? A I've long been in time, insulation or? for like sixteen years, mm-hmm. and then this and is, that was, was that like your only thing when mm-hmm. I first. And then Central Arts have been around for like six years now, five nice. or six years. And so doing the insulation and stuff, you probably worked your way through, like because I know like whenever you're doing like contractor work stuff mm-hmm. like that you have to win certain bids and like if you're doing yeah. like a uh, commercial like you have to get in kind of with government and stuff like that mm-hmm. well i don't really do any government projects but what i did what i realized is that it was better marketing than having a non-profit's better marketing than any marketing you could do yeah because like one of my builders was like we went to a party and he's like oh this is a guy he owns this non-profit and everything and he does all this for the community he works with the kids like he's like giving my whole resume out to like what we do in the nice. projects and everything yeah. during covid he started this food bank thing out of there and there have been all this other stuff he's got some really cool shit going on and <laughs> nice then you're like wow 
Oh, and he does our insulation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And <laughs> like, the thing that actually, like, makes you your money is, like, the smallest mm-hmm. thing on top there. The thing that, like, yeah. The thing that... <laughs> that's wild, dude. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that you've been doing for the longest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But is that kind of how it feels to you? Like, do you feel like this is more your baby than the insulation business? Well, they're both my babies, but, you know, the insulation business is, like... That's for profit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, like, <laughs> I think, what is it, like, I think last... Thursday, I actually did my job where I went and did like three quotes in a day. No, it was Friday. I did three quotes in a day, and I'm like, God, this sucks. <laughs> I was like, man, I went to like Argyle, and then I went to to Plano, then I went to like Garland, then I went to Richardson to go. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, God, that sucks. I was like, wait, that was my every day. I swear, right. Yeah. And I was like, wait, it's only like noon. It's been a while since I've done this. It's like, yeah. it's only noon. Wow. Already spent out. Yeah. yeah, it's like, wow, that's crazy. Jeez, dude. So then you realize like how efficient you could be and, mm-hmm. you know. And, then, and um, how like hands off you were able uh-huh. to get. And then I'm like, wait, I just did like $35,000 worth of quotes that are mm-hmm. pretty much my jobs. Yeah. So like that's coming in. Why am I freaking out about stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like that Austin thing where I went up got up at like for like 45 minutes in Austin you know that was like a $50,000 job and it was like oh, nice okay I guess if you just trust God and let you do what you're supposed to do then mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about just it just put your effort into it you know go, you know, go you get, get your, your thing it, done it comes out it's like every dollar I put into this I've gotten it back like at least like three times that's awesome yeah okay cool and then, you know it's like you do a lot of things I mean mm-hmm. And then, like, with you can put it into like your passion projects and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, like even like I was telling you today, like how we're fighting with the, uh, with the lady, the, about, lady the about the food table, you yeah. know. Like, <laughs> yeah. I guess I the guess, quote unquote rats. I guess you win that, the yeah. uh, outrage points. Go you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you win. Yeah, just go ahead. Go ahead and win. Take your win and get. The mm, yes, fuck thank you, out thank here, you. Please. I don't know who you're impressing with this, but <laughs> you're not impressing me. Herself. Yes. yes. Her her outrage, her moral outrage that you know we're doing something for the yeah. community. <laughs> And, That's ridiculous. Uh, well, it's crazy because one of the things I learned by doing this is like, no matter how good you are, mm-hmm. you're never good enough for like certain people. Oh yeah. Like I have artists who are like, oh, he's not done this, you know, he's like this. And I'm like, dude, you know, I don't make any money doing this. Yeah. Like people are always just all about the money. I'm like, what money? I swear, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, what mo- could, I don't know what money there is. So it's yeah. like, I guess the only thing cool is I have a Street Fighter machine here that I've always wanted when I was a kid. I have a full nice. arcade in the back. I, I guess, did see but, that, dude. This back area. Is yeah, we started dumpy. arcade like a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And we would work with Quarter Lounge, and we would, um, and we would uh, have these ar- arcade themed ar- events, and that's what like these little kick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I've seen a good bit. Yeah, there's a bunch of video game yeah. art stuff, and you know, it was a, it was a fun event because mm-hmm. you make a little arcade, and then yeah. um, what Cedric did was Cedric decided that he wanted to host like a permanent arcade. So every Tuesday night, we have arcade over here from like. Seven until whenever Cedric decides to go home. So nice, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, cool. but then they have like Smash Brother tournaments and Street Fighter tournaments, Ooh, yeah, and there now you they're, go. you know, it's getting its own little momentum, and it's mm-hmm. kind of cool because it's a it's a part of the community that just wasn't getting served. Yeah, it's an safe, event for like people in well, that interest, you and you know? have a safe you have a space safe space for people to be at. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like not no one's doing scuzzy stuff; they're just right. kind of hanging out and just chilling out and having a good time. Yeah, doing it, so it's kind of a safe little environment. Yeah. It's for them to do that rather than whatever, whatever else they were the going to do. They were gonna do. Yeah. And yeah. So is that kind of what, like, so you're going along, you're doing, um, mm-hmm. you're doing the installation and everything like that. And mm-hmm. so what made you think of like the central arts idea? Where did that come um, from? Like, well, cause I was doing those pop-ups over at, over at Bedford mm-hmm. in the shopping center. So we did one and it went really well. And I remember the chair of the... That was for you, said, like, the, the city chamber. of Bedford, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the chair of the Cultural Commission is like, okay, well, we got that underdone. What's next? So I'm like, we keep going. Yeah. Like, if I was in college and you said, hey, we have a spot that we could constantly just work in. Yeah. I would have shit my pants and I would have been, this is, uh, this is awesome. Yeah, let's keep doing it, yeah. Just keep doing it and keep doing it keep doing it. So then, um, kept doing it and had a bunch of shows there and then finally a space came up for rent and I rented it out and my wife got really pissed off at me but <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I said it will come back just mm-hmm. don't worry and, and like, this was yeah. your money that you had mm-hmm. dropped into this right there yeah yeah I mean, the cultural commission like oh we'll help you and then as soon as I put money down everyone's like well it's already paid for it. I don't know oh, what to tell no, you. we never agreed to that no no oh, no gosh, no yeah. no <laughs> and then so we were like the city's little darling for a little bit and then we got a new city council people and then, and then now we're like my joke is that I'm exiled to Richardson. <laughs> because 
I tried to do a mural in Bedford, and one of the city council ladies, she's just like, you're expecting us to take a leap of faith, and I can't do that. And it's like, in the meantime, we painted a mural over here yeah. in the alley because someone vandalized the wall that said, I hate Mexicans, and we painted a mural. Oh, wow. We built yeah. a whole freaking park out there. Nice, yeah. So we built, like, a parklet. It's like, yeah, I think you can take a leap of faith on me. I think I've proven my, my track record. Probably yeah. speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like these people get, like, these petty little grudges against you. Yeah. And then they, they think they know better don't like what you're doing and they want to have a shiny new thing they don't understand this type of art they don't want like the old lady paintings and something mm-hmm. they can walk around a gallery and say this speaks volumes to me or stupid yeah, right yeah <laughs> they want that classic art, like oh know? yeah so there's a guy playing those you know the flute or mm-hmm. whatever look i don't know the, the, look at these lines oh the way this that is like speak. oh yeah yeah this is so cultured and it's like they want shiny new they don't want like basically a storefront that we turned into like an art gallery for less than like three thousand dollars nice like, yeah you know they want like the no white wall <laughs> mm-hmm. like a nice clean cut like you you serve like cheese and wine uh-huh. as people like walk through but who's gonna go to that i mean who i'm definitely i'm probably not going to that i mean <laughs> yeah there's like where art like our whole slogan is like where art lives and where art lives and grows and that was because um we went to trinity arts guild at the time and now they're with us well, we went to their building, and it was, like, a bunch of old ladies, and they were just painting. And Nice. And it was, like, weird, because it was, like, you realize that what happens is that that people start only doing art when they retire because they have time to do it. Yeah. And now they're just waiting to die, so mm-hmm. they're just getting yeah. this as a hobby, and that's, you know, that's what they do. Yeah. And... But there's a lot of young people that don't have a chance because there's not a space to do they it. They just don't them. have the time or the or the place to go to. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have something cool that's kind of fun for them to go do, it, and mm-hmm. it's like a lot more inviting. Nice. Because you yeah. know we would have these art shows and they would have a theme. So then now you have a, a painting prop, and so now you don't have a painter's block or whatever. Right. Yeah. You're just making something. You're just like making stuff based on this. Yeah. Shit, dude! I hadn't touched a brush in like years before yeah. I started this because you're full blown in the yeah you're just doing like adult stuff yeah. you, don't, you know and then you realize like damn like, this is awesome so and that's was, the like, art oh, yeah. I was starting to paint like these little guys right like, these are some of the first ones I did and what they were to was they were like, these little video game abstraction pieces on little blocks of wood because when, <laughs> when I was a little kid I started pieces. When I was a little kid, I would get my grandfather would build something, and then we'd grab the wood and build little little things out of it. And nice. I just, so I did like little TV sets of video game stuff. Yeah. And then, That's like, awesome, if you look at the line yeah. quality, it's like really bad. But then, yeah. When I started getting like better, I was like, I would start doing like you know, like that He-Man one. I, Ooh, there you go. Yeah. And then I got really good at it, so then would add more texture, so I'd have to learn how to use the pen. And I went really small because I wanted to get my dexterity back. Right, yeah. So then I started painting like on TV. Yeah, because you're getting older, you know, you're using your hands for, you know, well, nothing it's just, else, really. Well, it's not even that. It's just that so, you haven't so. used your, you haven't, like, you lose your line. Yeah. And I remember when I was in college, I used to fight with this one guy for, like, who was be the dominant monster in life drawing. Ooh. So, like, my life, it was just the two of us. We'd always, like, neck and neck. And we were always, like, trying to figure out who was, who was superior. And we were always waiting for Phil Beheimer to say, like, okay, you, you, He's like, that's a monster of a drawing or something. And you're like, yes, I beat him. I beat him. Nice. Yeah. So there it was you like go, this yeah. little rivalry. Wait, so what was the judge? Like, who, who judged it? Um, it was like, what, if you got Phil to, like, say that was a monster of a drawing or something, it was mm-hmm. just something like, if, <laughs> if, if you were side by side and he went to yours first and you won that. Nice. Is Phil the professor? Yeah, or? he was a professor. He, was nice. like, he looked like Mr. Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns from? Simpsons. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Oh, Phil, yeah. Phil was a trip because he was. Um, I wonder if he's still alive. I doubt he's still alive. Oh man, no. But he was. Um, he was this old guy, and he had a model, and she was about my age, right? so she was probably like forty five, forty six, mm. and she was kind of she was kind of hot. Yeah, and they were living together, and he, and she, he went to jail because she had um, went to jail for a night because. He owed her money. She said she owed, he owed her money for modeling, and she went and poured ice cold water on him uh-huh. while he was asleep. And so he's like a thousand year old man. He freaked out. And he like just got wet. Yeah. And so he just started like flailing, and he popped Hell her in yeah. the jaw. Oh no! <laughs> he like just yeah. So he got arrested for that. And oh wow! I yeah. just remember making fun. I was like, how many how many times a year does Phil go to jail? Right. And he was behind me. Yeah. And he overheard me, and he's like, Joshua. Uh huh. I ever tell you the one about the college student that went to the Paso Zoo and thought he was going to be smarting 
climbing the lion's pen and kicked the lion in the balls. I'm like, no, what happened? He's like, well, I ate him. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm like, all right, Phil. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. Shit That's behind that you, right? old man like cryptic shit that the yeah, is funny. Like, That's like, awesome. <laughs> like I'm not gonna threaten you. I'm just but... gonna let you know that fuck off right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> he was a trip. He was a good guy. <laughs> you know. So nice. So yeah. you're going through. So you're doing your events and stuff, and these are where people come and like you give them the. Uh-huh. Uh, you give them like. Uh, the resources to make stuff, I guess, and you get like, is it like a competition? No, I mean, they would just like, make their stuff it? and we just have shows and everything. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, you'd just have like people out there painting or mm-hmm. doing whatever. Kind yeah, whatever. Of stuff they would bring in their artwork and they would go from there and then. Nice. Well, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. we need to go back to doing that because COVID kind of killed that whole thing. And yeah. It, it was kind of a slodge getting it back, but we're doing an event over in Richardson this weekend over at the nice. Culture in the Core. We took over a 10,000 square foot building that my cool. buddy oh. David owns. Yeah. How many people do you have going to that? Um, that's a big thing with the city of Richardson, so we're just piggy bank- backing on that one. So <laughs> oh, nice, okay, yeah, that's crazy, dude. Yeah, but like Cedric got some DJs going there. We took over like this. It was like this warehouse kind of thing, and yeah, we went and, uh, spray painted like the whole wall back there, and we got some vintage dealers and a bunch of art people and nice. Yeah, it's kind of fun. That sounds cool, dude. Yeah. So how many? So mm-hmm. so yeah, I saw on your. Uh, on your website, or mm-hmm. I guess it was more on your like Instagram and stuff. Like uh-huh. you do have fa- a good amount of events. So like during oh, yeah. like, so you're coming back from kind of like the mm-hmm. COVID stuff, and like it, like when were you able to kind of get the events back? Um, we should be getting them pretty quickly. It's yeah. just you're still kind of in that like rebuild kind of a stage from it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a hard hit because you yeah. know a lot of a lot of artists you know they had that like that COVID fear or mm-hmm. like people are like I don't know if I want to come out yet I'm not ready to come out you yeah know? well you know artists they're not the most like hey, social I, in the first guys, place come you know? on let's come out yes. let's, let's go back to our normal lives you know please <laughs> like I remember like I think I had a joke on Facebook today that thank God COVID was over and I can't remember what the what happened today like two years ago but something happened that I was like oh thank God COVID's over yeah <laughs> what would be two years ago? That'd be I don't know May of twenty twenty. Yeah, what was like, it? About two months after everything kind of shut down. What would, what would it be? Down. What was today? Today's the thirtieth. The thirtieth. Who the hell knows? Who cares? I swear, right? Yeah, yeah. we know the basic timeline there. Yeah, we know something. <laughs> yeah, Some, something to distract us. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for Putin, we'd still be in, like in COVID or something. Right though, yeah, because everybody kind of just forgot. Like, oh yeah, everything started COVID. going crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was the thing, wasn't it? That's crazy, dude. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> COVID. Nice. Yeah. I like how they're trying to make monkeypox a new thing again. It's like stop. What? I haven't heard about this. Monkeypox, yeah, because uh, Biden said we all should be worried about monkeypox. It's like get out of here. Maybe you should be because you're I like ninety about, fucking. I ain't worried about though. anything anymore. Monkeypox, bro. That's the goofiest shit. Did you ever get COVID? I actually did. I did, did get you? it for sure one time, um, but I got it in the summer at uh-huh. the same time, and like I had just gone swimming, and like I uh, I got like a badass ear infection, uh-huh. and then uh, I got sick at the same time, and honestly, the ear infection was worse than the COVID was. I never got COVID. Did you not? Nice. No, dude. I was working with like handing out food to like the homeless and yeah. like, all the community and mm-hmm. everything when COVID first started, and we were handing out like we had rice before everyone had rice. And we oh just, wow, yeah. We just starts how we started the food table stuff. And, mm-hmm. So what? So uh, before COVID, were you doing like the food bank stuff like that? No, like, no, not at all. No, I was no. like, just, I was like, just like, it was just the art. What happened right? was that somebody had said that they needed protein, mm-hmm. and she had a baby, and she didn't have anything. Oh wow! And yeah. COVID had just hit, mm-hmm. so she's like, I don't have shit, so I need something. Yeah. So Cedric and I had gone and stockpiled a bunch of food because he was working at Lonesome Dove, and they said, Yeah, you better get ready. Yeah, it's gonna be bad. Get what you can get, dude. Yeah. So you know, when the restaurant people tell you to go get food, you better go get food. Yeah, for sure. So we got all this food. We did all this craziness, and it was like surreal. It was like the end of the world kind of thing. And yeah, it was super like, weird. Yeah, and you're like stupid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was over at like Sprouts, and mm-hmm. I was looking for jasmine rice, and they didn't have jasmine rice, and I was like, oh my god, it's like COVID all over again. And I just remember that being so angry because I was like, this is such bullshit that you know they fed us all this, and yeah. it's like. It's the whole thing, dude. Like it, I mean, it was. I mean, it was a thing. It was um, a thing. You, know, you give it. It was that. a yeah. thing, but you know what? It was like a ninety-nine percent chance of survival, and it mm-hmm. was like, yeah. And it was all so like psychosomatic, most of it. like it. Oh yeah. It, it was just. It was crazy, dude. Like the it whole thing. It was just thing. weird because yeah. it was like, like we shut ourselves down more than anything. Kind of shut down, you know. Yeah, yeah. I just remember like I was. Um, 
I would. I remember I was going to the gym and I was like swimming. It was like right before they shut everything down, and I was like, I should swim. And I'm like, I don't know enough about this. What if I get sick and I'm swimming? Right. Oh and no. I'm like, yeah. That's so stupid. Yeah. Go. <laughs> Like you're swim. not going to be anywhere near anybody else. Like, yeah, you, but you didn't know get I was it from the water. Yeah, okay. right. <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, AIDS started, right? I was like, right. Yeah. I was, it was 1984. Mm-hmm. We we're in California and they're watching TV and they're talking about rockets and dying. You're like, holy shit, rockets and died of AIDS. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, now it's real. Now, yeah. And now we're COVID time, right? Mm-hmm. And you got this dumbass Anthony Fauci back there. Mm-hmm. You can get AIDS from a toilet seat. You can get AIDS. From, <laughs> and you're like, and then like later on, I never put two and two together until uh-huh. I was watching and I was watching some YouTube thing and then he was talking about Fauci and AIDS. I'm like, wait, what? And I was like, looked it up and I watched that video where he's like talking about AIDS in the toilet seat. And I was like, that motherfucker. The same like, shit. Why wow. do they keep listening to this guy? Rinse and repeat on them, bro. It's like, dude, you, why do you do this that's to us? Fe- that's fear mongering. Like, can like, can you please you... stop doing this to us, wow. Fauci? Like, Fauci, you need to burn in hell. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Dude, that's what sucked about AIDS is like, I was like, you know, I'm like 12 years old. And yeah, you're, like, you don't really. You're, you're probably not going to 12 get years it. old and you're like. I don't know, you might have been having sex then. No, know. but you know, <laughs> but then you like go and then it's like, so. Like, one of my builders is like 10 years older than me and he was telling me, like, yeah, dude, we go to Acapulco, we go hook up with these chicks on the beach and we go do this. We just get laid and get drunk and get laid. You don't even know the girl's name or anything. I'm like, Mike, fuck you. <laughs> like right in the middle of the whole, like. Like, fuck you, Mike. He's like, oh, like, what year was this? He's like, this is about 81. Mm-hmm. And you're like, fuck you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you didn't know the dangers. <laughs> like you guys were like so like the last generation they could get away with. And then like, when I was, Literally, dude. Dude, yeah. when I was a kid, it was like weird because it was like all like, like all fear you're gonna die yeah you're gonna die like and like you were in like sex ed class and you're like, gonna you die. have sex somebody's getting die. pregnant and you're gonna die and then they tell you okay if this person had sex with this person and they have this many partners and they have sex with this many and yeah. this is how many chances you have to catch aids and you're like so okay. fuck you anthony fauci again yeah <laughs> nice okay i didn't but, realize that he was he yeah, is that I, old isn't he yeah he is Whoa. i'm like why you know he's like the most highest paid government official there is really Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, like, just, like, I can't believe that. It was, like, you were just a kid, and you're just... Just getting, like, fear. No, they feared the hell out of you, dude. That's crazy, dude. And then, then, so, like, when I go to college, right, that's when political correctness starts. Oh, yeah. So then they're giving us, like, okay, if you're going to (laughs) have sex with a girl, you need to ask her, can I take off your bra? May I kiss you? May I do this? And we're making fun of it. We're like, this is so stupid. It's going to fuck up the whole Like, oh, well, you guys are, like, so now... You know, we all we all made fun of it. We're like, this is political, right? this is stupid. Yeah. Like, this is stupid. And then people are like, oh, if you're like Mexican-American. I'm like, I was born in America, sir. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> I'm an uh, American. My, my parents you. were born in America. Mm-hmm. Well, I was a Mexican-American. I was Mexican-American descent. I was like, as an Irish-American, yeah, how swear, do you feel? Right? <laughs> like, why don't you get a hyphen? <laughs> Yeah, I swear. And as an Icelandic American. As an uh, Icelandic American. Yeah. What, I mean, where's your hyphen? Where's yeah. your hyphen, sir? Yes, yeah. And, you know, I remember my dad saying that. Don't let anyone hyphenate you because you're an American. You're not a partial American. You're a true American. Oh, yeah, you're right, you know? Yeah. And then it's like this, like, all this weird division people try to put on things. Literally, you know? dude, yeah. You're like, why? Why? So that they can feel superior. And I never of understood any of that. It was like... I never understand how people like always want to like make somebody like lower than them or yeah. Or, like, well, it's make... all about an insecurity within themselves, probably. Yeah, like probably that same lady you were talking about with the rats and stuff, dude. Probably, yeah. who knows? Yeah. But it's like she needed something I've today never... to talk it's, about it's... and get attention. I remember I had a friend in, in college, and he was telling us that you know we were at El Paso had like only like two clubs, and it was like old plantation and 101 old plantation was a gay bar mm-hmm. 101 was like the, the alternative club but old plantation always been the better music right mm-hmm. and i see my buddy peter at like this club and he's like wearing like this military jacket cut to here and he's like <laughs> you know he's ripped and he's like you know and he's like nice dancing yeah. with some dude i'm like oh hey pete and he's like <gasps> i'm like what and he's like you're not supposed to know i i didn't know how to tell you i'm like tell me what you know, I'm gay, and I'm like, and? Okay, yeah. And? Yeah, <laughs> we're both here, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, well, I didn't want you making fun of me. I'm like, dude, I make fun of you all the time. Yeah, like, you're just I make fun of, It's like, just, just like, if you were vegan, I would make fun of you for being vegan. If yeah. you were like, whatever, I'd make fun of you for whatever. It's mm-hmm. like, 
I've made fun of you since the day we met. Yeah. That's how we became friends, and we were making fun of each other. Yeah. It's like, you're still, you spent the night at my house a million times. Yeah. You've given me, given me rides to go pick up my girlfriend a million times. Nothing changes. Yeah, I'm not holding it against you anyway. Yeah, yeah. and it's just like, dude, I kind of love you, man. You're my buddy. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't give a that shit. Sucks, like, what uh, do I hate, care? Yeah, that hate and thought, like, uh, yeah. yeah, it was suck, because I had another friend, and he's like, yeah, I want to... I think I'm gay and I want to experiment with you. I'm like, dude, I don't feel like, you like that, but I'm very honored that you would consider me like right, that. Right, yeah, okay, then cool. We yeah. weren't friends anymore. And I'm like, what? Like, dude, you were like my best friend. Ah. Uh, you were like the first one I ever told about, like, my kid. Yeah. You were like, and then you just like, okay? I'm like, I didn't give a shit. Oh, man. I'm like, I just considered you getting hit by well, like an ugly chick or something. I was just like, dude, I, like, you're like, you're my like, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate like, it. I guess I, yeah. it's like, I feel flattered, but I'm just not into you. But, you know, yeah. it's like, you kind of feel bad because it's like your Aww. buddy. That sucks, dude, yeah. And that's yeah. probably the hardest part about being a gay guy. Like, like, and that's what, like, they say it a lot in, like, TV shows and stuff now, like, with, like, lesbian and gay and all that stuff. They're like, well, if I come mm-hmm. out of this and I try that then it's like I'm well, excommunicated you know yeah. I mean, who cares but I don't think it's really like that but it's like it's so built up I, you know, I think it's know. like there's a lot of people that just want it to be built up because oh, yeah. it's like part of the drama like a, like a, you know mm-hmm. people have, like live their lives like they're in a movie or something like I say they're the main I character. say this and you say that and mm-hmm. I'm gonna get a zinger in you're gonna yeah. say this and it's they're like, like playing through like, these I'm scenarios for you in their head. okay when you say this I say this when you say this I say <laughs> yeah. this and then I'll say this and I'll sound cool and then you sound you know you sound like and I'll get asshole. up on it and get one on you and, mm-hmm. and I'm the main character so I get the last say in this whole thing and yeah. you know like uh but you know, like the three boringest things are someone's like religion, their sexuality, and their and their, their politics, their ethnicity. I'm like, I could care less. Like, yeah, like literally. Yeah, good job. Good like job. all those things that you're not supposed to talk about at the what, bar. Why do I care? We don't care about. Yeah. Like, why do I care? Yeah. Like, so, as long as you are who you are, if just you're be a good genuine, person, just a be bad a person, person. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Okay. Yeah. And that's the thing is, like, a lot of people don't realize it's like. Like, I had people, they wanted to do, like, a fuck Trump show. I'm like, dude, I'm not doing a fuck Trump show. No, like, why God. not? Like, well, don't you hate Trump? I'm like, I don't hate anyone, dude. It's like, it's like, yeah. it's like the d- difference between Trump and Biden was, like, if you were going to have a fart in an elevator or a fart what in the car. What was it on a South Park? Was it a, you know? It was a, a shit sandwich and a something else. I don't remember what yeah. it was. But South Park had it fucking correct. They, they were like, dude, we don't want to fucking vote for anybody right now, dude. Oh, like, God, it was like, God, the whole thing was like. Like, you're in an elevator and someone farts in the elevator and there's someone like, Oh my God, that's so disgusting! Why would you <laughs> fart in the elevator? Yeah. Why would you do that? Won't mm. you have any? It's like, shut up. Oh We're all going to be stuck here. Yes. We don't have a choice. Like, we can either freak out about it or we or can just you can be like, yeah. with it. You yeah. know, and you're like, why do I care? It's like, why is this important <laughs> to you? Somebody farted. It's okay. Yeah. I, I remember as a kid, dude, I was just like, Shit, dude! I didn't even know who the vice president was. Like, I was like, <laughs> like I forgot. Ob- I forgot Biden was Obama's vice president. That's how much I, I care. Honestly I could give two shits. I'd be yeah. like, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, and then you think about it, you're like, Obama, Biden. That's what that oh. was. Oh, okay, yeah. I remember. So he wa- has been around for like sixty fucking years. That's somebody funny. wanted to do like this political show, and I was like, yeah, you can do a political show, but I'm gonna. We have to do it based off monkey business. I'm like, what? Nice. Like monkey business. We have to have a monkey business show. Mm-hmm. That's all we're gonna do. Yeah. Like, what's monkey business? I was like, those first political sex scandal back in like 1988 <laughs> with Walter Mondale. I think it was Walter Mondale. I don't know who it was. I was thinking monkey the... business was like you'll just like no, fucking. No, monkey but, business okay. was this guy was on a boat. That's and, an actual thing. Yeah, this guy was on a boat. It's called monkey business, and he, and he, some girl was sitting on his lap, mm-hmm. and it wasn't his wife, and that was a political sex scandal. So he was gonna run for president, and they didn't let him run for president because because of the monkey business. Of the monkey business. Wow. So it's like, if is you, that where that word came from? No, it's no, okay. always been like that. Oh, okay, monkey cool. business, monkey business. You yeah, know, monkey business is just fucking around. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> but what happens is that people go and they 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 make these big these big deals. Like they're they're not really a big deal. It's like who cares? Yeah, right. Yeah, like the president's not going to change your life. I hate to tell you this. No shit, dude. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't change your life any mm-hmm. bit. Like, if you just live your life, you're going to well, live Well, didn't life. you know that he sets the gas prices? Well, you know what? <laughs> Don't shut down pipelines, you know? But, I mean, right. Like, I'm over in Bedford, and my joke about Bedford is Bedford, if you, if they had a contest of slamming your dick in the door, Bedford would win it. And they'd be like, <laughs> why are you doing that? Because we're good at doing it. We, 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 what's, <laughs> what, we won awards for doing it. Like, what do you get off doing it? A smash dick. Oh, so I did it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't want apartments because we don't have housing for young people. And we yeah. want to stay 
old, but now we need a revenue stream. Yes, right. Yeah. So where do you get the revenue stream from? We're building these things and people are having to travel. Oh, wait, Carrollton's, wait, Carrollton built like this whole thing that you didn't want to build and it's mm-hmm. successful and now their buildings are flourishing there. Yeah. But we got a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> we got a Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Well, like, Chick-fil-A, you pop that thing up anywhere and it's going to just go But off. it's like, wow. I was amazed like how much, how excited people were for Chick-fil-A. Yeah. <laughs> Over in Bedford? Yes. Yeah. You ever see uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Yes. This was Johnny Depp. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that scene where uh, John C. Riley is like talking about like a burger barn and how it revolutionized the salad barn. And he's like, John Depp's just looking out the window like, oh my God, you shut the hell up. I about literally this don't care, dude. Yeah. Like I have to care less. He's like, no, they revolutionized the salad barn. Everyone yeah. has a salad barn. And, and you're like, that's how I feel like in Bedford sometimes. Like, that's Well, that's how I feel about Chick-fil-A sometimes because like, dude, I've, oh. well, like my, my, one of my bosses, he actually used to work for Chick-fil-A and like they have all these like innovations that like they'll do like, They'll do, like, conveyor belts to bring your to-go orders, like, up and over the cars and outside mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And it's like, I mean, yeah, cool. Uh, I mean, it makes your business more efficient, I guess. But, like... Uh, all I know about Triple a is... I don't when, care how it works. When um, I was in college, I was broke as shit. Mm-hmm. And I thought I had a friend that was working at Triple a And he would give me free Chick-fil-A. Mm-hmm. I thought he was giving me free Chick-fil-A because we were cool. Uh-huh. Just came down that he was just into me. Nice. <laughs> okay. And um, I would go to Chick-fil-A and my boss was like, did you go to Chick-fil-A? And I'm like, what do you mean? So that dude that wants to bang you, I'm like, what? What are you? What do you mean? Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, that dude wants to bang you. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, he's he's really into you, and I'm like, wait, no, he's my buddy. Oh no! I'm yeah. like, no. And, and you, know, you start you like looking back at it, and you're I'm like, like, fuck, I'm an and you're like asshole. so invested now. I'm, I'm like, such a oh, dick. Like, no, oh, I have to bang this guy. guy dude. I'm like, like <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a dick. Oh. You've been leading this poor guy on I, for so for, long. For free Chick-fil-A. I'm awful. <laughs> You're a slut for Chick-fil-A. That's I just was. I, I thought he was my friend. We <laughs> met him at the arcade. We were playing Tekken. Oh, no. Yeah. When Tekken first came out, it was like, <laughs> I thought he was a cool dude. I just thought we were. <sighs> Still sounds like a cool dude. He was a cool dude. We were playing video games. Yeah. That's all we did. Did you ever talk about this with him? Did Never. you eventually bring this up? Never. Or did you just stop going to Chick-fil-A? I don't remember. <laughs> no, I probably went to Chick Fil A. I just thought probably I probably just started Chick-fil-A. paying for it. Yeah. Like, now, nah, dude, I'm gonna get you fired. Yeah. Right there, you go. Yeah. And then you realize you're gonna get this guy fired. And yeah. Jobs are not easy to get here. Mm-hmm. And he's not even gonna get laid. So you know, oh, sorry. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't even remember the guy's name. I feel such like a dick. Oh uh, no, yeah. <laughs> to, but to be honest with you, it was like 1993. So I mean, like, yeah, he's probably making like five bucks an hour. It doesn't really matter. 1993 was like almost like. 30 years ago, so... Yeah, right, though, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, so there's no fucking... There's no way you remember that dude. I don't even yeah. remember that guy's name. I mean, sorry, dude, but... Shit, dude, I don't remember, like, some of my girlfriend's names. <laughs> dude, I don't remember, that crazy? Like, half like the people I meet, bro. Like, you totally forget, like, who you've dated in your life, and then, you're, like, one day you're like... Yeah. Oh, yeah! It's fucked up because, like, I used to, like, actually have, like, a list, like, mm-hmm. there for a while. Like, when... I mean, I was, like, 16, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, had, I had a list of, like, 10 fucking people because it was actually, like, that hard because, like, you're living day-to-day life and you're like... Oh yeah, like we had a thing for a fucking month. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't like those little kid romances. Yeah, dude. Yeah, exactly. Like an hour long. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's what that's what life is. Dude. It's all these little interactions with all these that's people. It's crazy. It's like all of a sudden you're like. <laughs> yeah, and then all of a sudden you're here, and you're like, "Well, that happened." Yeah, mm-hmm. and it gets brought up, and yeah. Then dude, sometimes like, oh, I forget. Like I'm like, I'm gonna be forty eight this year, and sometimes I forget how old I am because it's like. Do you feel 48? No. No way, dude. You don't act 48. I'll give you that. No. <laughs> you know what happened to me is like when I was younger, I was like in my 30s, I was really fat and out of shape. Oh, really? Yeah. And then I was never athletic because I'm left-handed. Didn't realize I was left-handed. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm right-handed with everything else. So I was shitty at sports. I'm, I'm the like, opposite. I just thought, hey, man, I'm just bad at sports. Yeah. Oh, no. And then so, you know, I'm bowling one day and and I'm, this guy's like, you're left-handed? I'm like, no. I'm like, why are you throwing left-handed? I'm like, I don't know. I just felt what comfortable. You, what do you mean? So then I tried to bowl right-handed. I'm like, oh, this sucks, right? He's like, you're probably left-handed. Please, like, close your, close one of your eyes. Um, I was like, did he do the triangle thing on you? No, he said, just close, close your eyes and see which eyes, like, which eye can close. Like, if you're gonna close just one eye. Yeah. And he's like, whatever cloud you closed, that's your weak eye. And your dominant eye is the one that stays open. Whoa. So like, I can't not close my left eye if I'm gonna close one eye. Like, yeah. I, I cannot do that. Whoa. So my left eye is that dominant. That's and a trip. So then I go to the go to the gym and I start shooting baskets. Mm-hmm. And I'm shooting left-handed. And 
You're actually starting to make something. I'm starting making baskets. I, I remember during high school, I scored like two baskets, like my yeah. entire high school basketball, like when you PE stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. I just thought it sucked. I remember tennis. We'd just fuck around during tennis and break the tennis rackets and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Because coach was like, anyone that can break a tennis racket gets like an automatic A. Yeah, because they're hard to break, yeah. Yeah, so what we figured out is if you get a lighter and you light the middle of it on the sweet spot. Nice. And then you swing it. <laughs> you it goes like, right through. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you break the racket. Yeah. So we had like all our rackets. <laughs> so the, all the rackets we had burnt like those weeks. So, like, so we got an A. We so he's it. like, damn, how do you guys keep doing this? <laughs> Strong, bro. You don't understand. Like, dude. It's <laughs> because you burned the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really weak. And you, just, what? you cheated on your test. That's what you did. Oh, yeah. That's what we did. <laughs> All right. Well, I have to pee real fast. Go so pee. What I want you to do is right. hit these guys with a plug. I want you to, like tell them about that uh, that event that you have or anything, okay. dude, because I'm, I'm excited about that. And whenever I look back on this, I'm going to leave it back. All right. All right. I'll just, wait, just talk to myself about, like, <laughs> about this pop up over at. Um, so we're at the Culture in the Core. I want to say it's uh, 500 South Greenville Avenue off of Polk Street in uh, off the Core District of Richardson. Let me double check that so I can just look like I'm even more professional. I was just talking to myself, which is kind of odd. But yeah, we'll have a bunch of artist vendors and a couple DJs and some fun stuff over there. We're also working on several different projects over here. Artcade is uh, Tuesday night from 7 to whenever Cedric decides to go home. Also doing uh, kids programming all summer long from two to I mean twelve to two, uh, Monday through Friday, and that's like a ten dollars suggested donation. If you can't afford it, we don't care. Just come bring your kid. Uh, we'll be doing some art classes over in Bedford. We'll be doing some um, paint your pet classes. We'll be doing a paint your friend Picasso style. We'll also be doing a a, a succulent class, some stained glass classes. So we've got a bunch of stuff coming up for the fall and summer it will be good times and it feels kind of weird to talk to myself but it's good times to see you guys and i don't know if anyone's still watching this or listening to this but if you guys are going to cancel me i'm so sorry i'm just old and that's what happens when you're in gen x and you just you know things just happen and that's how it gets you get old and then you get kind of outdated and then you just talk to yourself while you wait for your buddy to go and use the restroom so um yeah I don't really have much more to say about that. Uh, if you ever want to donate, there's a cash app. And there's also a Venmo at centralarts.com. And uh, thanks. I'll just look at my phone and figure out what the date on that, what the actual address for that pop-up is. <laughs> <laughs> I like those moments where you're just like, I'm just going to talk to myself now. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me take a leap before you go do that. Yeah, do you think? Yeah. Now I get to talk to the people. <laughs> talk to people. Nice. Okay, so Josh is going to the bathroom, so I'll just hit with like a little plug for his whole thing, dude. Like I'm sitting here in the Central Arts Studio, dude, and this thing is awesome, dude. Like I'm actually gonna hit you with like a little run around real quick. So we're sitting over here with all of this stuff going on kind of turn around and they have like the actual like storefront kind of deal over there and like a little gallery going on then if you head that way then you end up back in like their arcade area and it's just dude this place is like i want to say like punk rock of some sort but like dude this place is cool man got kind of buried down with this and this dude's awesome too so just make sure i put this back in the right spot so you can still see us real quick yeah nice but, so if you're looking for Central Arts, you can go to uh, at Central Arts underscore um, nonprofit on uh, Instagram, and I assume probably Twitter and stuff like that, too. And then uh, centralartsbedford.com, or .org, I believe it is. Um, and you can find their website and everything like that, and you can get tickets to, like, their events and stuff like that. And, like, if you're in the DFW area looking for somewhere to just go, like, showcase your art and have a good time with some good people, that this is the place to do it, so... Yeah, so definitely check all that out, dude. And then, you know, if you're already listening to the podcast, so I don't feel like I really need to plug myself. But if you're already on here, just go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button and hit that little uh, the little bell. It'll tell you whenever the podcasts come out and stuff like that. So that'll help you, and it'll help me too. So There you go. I finished this beer, but, like, 
I don't think I want to crack another one what? quite yet. <laughs> yeah, well, I have. I just finished this one, and the only other thing I have is like another full tall boy, and I don't yeah, even know if we have that not. much time left. Yeah, I'll just save that for whenever I get home. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want that tall boy in driving home. Definitely not, dude. Yeah. Drinking and driving can kill a friendship. It can kill a lot of things. <laughs> you can kill like your whole career. Hell yeah, it can, dude. Dude, yeah. it's amazing. I'm still in this water. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, I think we've hit like we've been going on our little detours. That's the best yeah. part about this podcast. Is like we can literally talk about whatever the hell we want, and like I kind of curate it to kind of keep it going in a certain direction. But like, dude, it's just fun. Like sitting I always down keep, and talking. Yeah, dude. I always want to do like a. This is how I fucked up a nice. business podcast. Because wow. you always hear people and they're like, this is how I became successful. It's like, I don't give a shit about that. I don't right. know like, you what, f- what did you do how wrong? Did you fuck that up. Ooh. If you had one story to tell on that, what would it be? Um, on both. Let's do one on your uh, on installation fuck-ups? business. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, so my main guy, Raul, sits me down. And he says, boss, I need to meet with you. So I go to like Gloria's in, in Louisville, and he's there with his wife. And he's like, "You got three days to, you got three weeks to fire Omar and David." Ooh. I'm like, "Why?" And he's like, "You need to fire Omar, David, and Steve." And I'm like, "Why?" So because they're all stealing from you. <laughs> oh shit! And I'm like, "Really? What are they doing?" And he's like, "Yeah, like in spray foam, you can steal material like crazy because there's like so many mis- there's so many things that can like go wrong." Yeah. So they're giving me all this stuff, all these diagnoses. They're like, hey, this isn't working. I need this part. I need this part, this part, right? Mm-hmm. So not only are they stealing from me, but they're making me buy like these like seven, $800 components. Oh, wow. And so, and then it takes like three hours to install them. So now they're getting paid to install them. Oh, and, my gosh. And it's like, wow. So you're buying like these, like, you know, it's expensive pump parts and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And basically what they were doing is they were buying, taking all those parts and Building their own, own rig, stuff. yeah, Aww. okay, and then doing their own little business on the side. I'm guessing mm-hmm. there too, yeah. And then I had the sales guy, and he was like the most milk toast guy you'll ever meet. Like he <laughs> was just like, like, I don't think the guy could even like if he ever had an erection and had sex, I'd be like, what? Steve? What? Yeah. That dude? That dude derived enough passion out of that anything. Dude's like, oh, I'll do uh, okay. Okay, yeah. I Does guess, he have kids? I guess anything like can happen in the world, you know. <laughs> Stranger things have happened, I guess. Yeah. I guess. I mean, that guy had like no. Like, <coughs> I was like the most boringest man I ever met in my life. Wow. Yeah. Like, he talked to me. I'm like, okay, so you're boring the shit out of me. Oh my gosh, those people that just kind of like suck the life out of you. Like I you're like having just, a conversation with them that you're like carrying. He's like, really smart and really good at what he did, but he was like really just dry. Really dry, and yeah. he was like. <laughs> No personality. Oh, no, yeah. And, but he was, like, good sales guy, but you think, but he was just giving stuff away. Oh, okay. So nice. He was like, yeah, you know, he was like, what's the lowest I could sell for? And at the time, it was, like, 2800 a set, and he was mm. selling for 2800 as his average baseline. Then he would go below that. He's like, oh, I need to drop this down. I'm like, yeah, sure, I guess. So, yeah. like, like not telling me what his baseline that he had sold, like, something at. Yeah. Oh, wow. So he would mark it, he would mark it at a certain point, and then he would... So he would be at the lowest them. point, and they'd be like, hey, can I drop this, like, $500? And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Because I'm like, who the hell is going to sell for this point, this price point? That's yeah. an emergency price point. Yeah, we're just getting the job at this point, yeah. I'm like, oh, I guess we're just working to work. Yeah. I said, oh, no. And then so he was just sticking that away. Oh, wow. So basically, your biggest problem there, like... It's just, like, I trusted people, and then yeah. you trust people, and they don't have... Uh, you think they have your back. Yeah. They don't have your back. That's how, yeah. That's whenever you start learning about people, dude. And yeah. that's like when you know those people can burn in hell because it's like I'm the type of person that if you needed something, I'd be like, yeah, go ahead and take it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. oh, shit, you need this? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, like I can oh, get another one. I, I can help you out. Yeah. I don't mind helping you out because mm-hmm. it comes back. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, oh, you want to do a job on the side to make extra money? Yeah, go ahead. I'm not using the rig on this weekend. Why do I care? Yeah. I'm like, oh. Okay. Just tell me. Okay, just tell me. And just yeah. pay for what you use. Wow. It's that simple. Jeez, dude. And just taking money out of your pocket there, dude. That's rough. Yeah, it almost put me down, you know? Really? Yeah. But your mm-hmm. your foreman or, like, your top guy, he, he mm-hmm. knew what was Called going on? Called me out. On. And then we looked, I watched it and I fired him within a week and a half. And then nice, yeah. It was, like, just drama after drama. And you're like, oh, my God, this is horrible. Yeah. Working with people is the hardest part of working, I think. You dude. have to get to know people. Yeah. And, you know, it's like... 
you think you know somebody and then they, they do something like that to you. Yeah. And then what I found is like if someone ever says you changed, that means that you just don't let him take advantage of you anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or you used to be about this. Mm-hmm. Like there was a guy that used to work here and he was like, you changed. You used to be about the art. I'm like, yeah, I used to be about the art until you started giving everything away for free. Oh, yeah. And then using it for clout. And then you're like building up your own reputation. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's like. Like you're literally taking the profit from the nonprofit. And, yeah. Like we're yeah. doing like we would do like a $10 hang fee mm-hmm. per piece at the time. And that would be like we would get your piece ready. We put wire on it and get it ready to go. So, yeah. I mean, there's like. I mean, go, 10 bucks. That's the shit, least. Dude, Michael yeah. charges you like $35 for that, you know. For per sure. piece. Yeah. So we would, <laughs> and you're just trying to do it so you can pay for like doors and you just want to have like a decent opening yeah just so you can keep the lights on in here dude yeah and then you know you'd have artists and they were like they wouldn't make anything during a show and they'd just be like look well, you know, the reason why no one's, you're not selling anything is because you look like someone just took a shit right in front yeah, of you. Yeah, really. Like, no one could even approach you about well, your art if they wanted to. Yeah. Well, I'm socially awkward. It's like, well, then don't be in business for yourself. I swear, right? Yeah. Like, are you stupid? Put that shit on Etsy or something. Like, how old like, are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm socially awkward. It's like, no, go out and do something. Figure it out, dude. Like, yeah. pretend. Pretend. Pretend yeah. you're somebody you're not. Mm-hmm. Put on a face. Dude. Yeah. It, just feel like, hey. Do it. Yeah. I pretend all the time. You have to wow. just be like. And then you learn to fit in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting, dude. Yeah. I've like, yeah. Like well, about like, like the, so the stuff on the walls, this isn't your stuff. This mm-hmm. is like most like people like bring different people. In. Yeah. Yeah. Like Carlos and Nugas there. I love Carlos. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. And like Pat, Patty and then this is like four pennies. He kind of disappeared on us. I don't know what happened to him. I need to hit him up. And then, you know, there's some stuff. But, you know, we got to redo a lot of the stuff because it's just stuff that we've, you know, post-COVID. COVID was weird. Oh, yeah. So these people just kind of left their art behind. Oh, man. I have, a, I have the biggest art collection of stuff people have left behind. Oh, geez. Yeah. And then you'll get a call. Like, I had this one guy call me after, like, seven years. And he's like, did you show that painting? I'm like, I don't know. I, I could look I through the inventory, know. I guess. What was on it? Like, what? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody wants to buy that. I'm like, I don't know. Wow. Like, what were you thinking? Yeah. Like, you care that much about it. We, but you you left were it like here one of the first paintings here. here, and you just left it. And then yeah. you never hear from these people. They don't contact you, they don't oh, say no. anything. And you're like, because what happens is people will go and they do an art show, right? Mm. Then they don't sell anything. Yeah. And then that's it. Then they just quit on it. They're just going to quit. They just quit. So, like, if you look at their Facebook pages, mm-hmm. they don't post about art anymore. It's oh, like wow. they, they went to a show. I guess they, in their mind, they thought they were going to sell it all out. Yeah. And then it was just died. And then that was it. That was the end of their dream. And then that's kind of a shitty dream to have. Because well, it's like you don't have that. Like, you don't have that That drive. was your commitment. Yeah. yeah that's all you like had you, in you. Like, you, you went up to bat and mm-hmm. you struck out and then that was the end of the baseball. You're not, yeah. Like exactly. You're, like you're yeah. the first inning. Like yeah, for real. First you're inning. First inning. Come times, on. Dude. Yeah, that's great. Like if that would if that's how I would have done things, dude, I'd have been done two years ago at the very least. Like yeah. I think what people have to realize is you just have to fuck up, just fuck up repeatedly. Yeah. Like, like you get it eventually, mm-hmm. and you'll learn something from it too. Dude. It's better to fuck up off from the very beginning, mm-hmm. and then you've got that baseline. Yeah. And then once you got that baseline, you can say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm failing intelligently. Yeah. So I can say, okay, this didn't work. And I'm going to go this way. And then I'm going to go to this one. And mm-hmm. you go through A, B, C, D. And then you go, okay, those didn't work. And then C, B, D, you know, and yeah. then you're like, okay, well, it's part of this worked here. So I can put this here. And then you, you start building it out like that. Yeah. And then it starts to work. Mm-hmm. You're not, most often you're not going to get it the first time. You, if you got it the first time, it's just pure stupid luck. Yeah, exactly. And you yeah. didn't learn anything. Mm-hmm. And you're probably, it's probably not going to be very uh, sustainable, you know. Yeah. No. That's rough, dude, yeah. And that, that's how a lot of people are, dude. And like, or Well, not on that end, but on the part where, like, they try it, it doesn't work, and then it's over. Well, you know? why, why would it just be over? Yeah. Right, yeah. So you put all this time and effort into something that, like, and it's something, like, and especially with art, like, this is something that came from you. Like, this is, you know, like, mm-hmm. your passion or, like, your the way your brain works on something, you know, and... That's just that's all you cared enough about it too. Like that was it. Yeah, that's rough, dude. And that's it's like cool. Yeah. What people don't understand is like you're making art, right? So there's like nothing to art. Yeah. Like you can't eat it. You can't. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have any value. Yeah. Like it's oh, like that man. Movie, like what good is a flower? <sighs> yeah. I have people and they're like, "Well, I bought this painting for like five hundred dollars. Would you buy it off me?" I'm like, "No." 
Like, what was the value of it? It's like, whatever I want to pay for it doesn't have a value. Yeah. Like that Sunny in Philadelphia thing where, you know, Frank's pretending to be an art broker. Oh, my gosh. I love oh that Oh, my one. God. I love that <laughs> yeah. one. I was like, His little persona in that Oh, but that's, that's so, so awesome. accurate. That's yeah. the most accurate. Well, well, you're there to, he sells it, you know? Like, he, he puts it out there. You yeah, know? you're just making something. It doesn't have a value. It's yeah. just whatever. And, like, you know, a lot of people are like, well, what would you sell me this piece for? I mean, I'm like, I don't care. Take whatever you want to pay yeah. for. I don't really whatever, care. if it means something to I, you. I you know? don't need to collect my own work. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And that's yeah. the thing is a lot of people collect their own work. And then mm-hmm. they're their biggest collector because it's like. You won't let go of it. Or, no. Yeah. Like you don't think that that's what it's worth. But it's what it was worth to you. That's what it's worth. It. It's yeah. Like, or like people are like, do you have insurance? Does your gallery have insurance? I'm like, yes. But you're not going to get what you think you're going to get off Definitely it. Definitely not. No. If you told them like, like if you told them like what this was. Okay. Worth. Okay. Right now, <laughs> look, I, this is probably the most valuable piece in here because I can dig. I can say. I paid this much for all this material, mm-hmm. and then they'll give me the material cost, right? Uh, okay, but because right, this yeah. is like, I think there's probably like about three hundred dollars worth of bricks in there, mm-hmm. so I can get three hundred bucks off it because I can prove it's three hundred dollars worth of supplies, yeah. right? But like this canvas, if this thing caught fire right now, That's the like building a caught fire, $10, twenty dollar canvas, or? you're getting twelve dollars. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> unless it was appraised and unless it was this and unless it was that and it's yeah. like you're getting twelve dollars. All this paperwork and time that you had to put into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All those paintings over there, those really, really, really nice ones that yeah. you're gonna get a hundred and twenty dollars for it because you're gonna get twenty dollars for the paint and a hundred dollars for the canvas. Yeah. So they're gonna go what Michael sells it for and mm-hmm. Oh wow, yeah. Not including the time and everything that goes nope. into it. Yeah, what you think it's worth. Yeah. Because what you think it's worth in the art world is only what someone will pay for. Yeah. And whenever it comes down to, like it, like you were saying, with an insurance, like they go down to, like, what is it physically worth? Yeah. And, like, it, it, there's a lot of things, dude. Like, it, like even, like, the books that I sell, like, dude, mm-hmm. like, they're, like, physically, like, that's, like, a, like, five, ten dollar book, like, for what it's made for. Mm-hmm. But, like, I sell it for, you know, anywhere from, like, 25 to 30 dollars because I put all this time and effort and everything into it, you know. But, like, if I had a box of books and it burnt mm-hmm. up. It would get appraised for for five ten dollars, you know, yeah. And it's just what it is, and people don't understand that because it's like, just because you put your heart and soul into it doesn't mean it has any value. Yeah, exactly. We had a pickup stolen with chemical on it, Mm -hmm. and there was seven thousand dollars worth of chemical, and they gave us, I think they gave us like nine thousand dollars for the pickup and nothing for the chemical. Oh what? Like why didn't you insure the chemical? Like how do we know the chemical was on there? (sighs) Wow. And we're like, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And so you're like, well, you got to eat that. All right, I yeah. guess that's what happens. And Sorry, that's, that's what happens in big boy world, you know? That's rough, dude, yeah. Yeah, so that's what, you know, it's just what happens. That's a trip, dude, yeah. And, you know, it's just business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whenever it comes to business, dude, like, it's not worth what you think it's worth at all. Yeah. No, we had a job we had bid out the other day in Dallas. The whole apartment complex, a hundred twenty thousand dollars job. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't that much. It was like a hundred thousand dollars. Someone's doing it for fifty six thousand dollars, and we're like, why? Right. And we're like, why? You could have bid them eighty, and they probably would have took it. They were taking it for eighty. Yeah. But I was like, why? <laughs> but that's the thing is that you have like, you know, it's like you have this big job. You think you're gonna make money off it? Yeah. And it doesn't happen. Yeah. It's whatever you say it's worth, you know. And then if somebody says it's worth less, they go with that, you know. I, yeah. I remember when the recession hit. I had this customer in Colville. He had, like, all these, like, fancy bikes and all this stuff. And he was going to, we are going to insulate his shop, right? Mm-hmm. All right, let's do it. Let's do it, you know. And, I mean, this guy's got, like, $100,000 bikes and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. And we're about to go I buy all the chemical. And the chemical's non-refundable. And this is, like, my last thing. Last eighteen hundred dollars. I'm using like my oh, mortgage wow. money, and he doesn't return the phone call. So I have like eighteen hundred dollars worth of chemical and no business and no money, and it's like, oh shit. Yeah. So, you know, it's only money until it's in your pocket. That's exactly right. Yeah. Until and, it's up and paid for. And I used to have this business partner, and he'd be like, "Yeah, well, the spreadsheet says that we should be making this money." And I'm like, "Is the money in your pocket?" Mm-hmm. Well, no. I'm like, well, it's not your money. It's not your money at all. It's yeah. not your money till it's in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Until then, there's a lot of variables that can go wrong, and a lot of things that can go wrong, and a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. They just, 
do you have to take a different approach whenever you do the nonprofit rather than your actual like your business side of that? I don't really try to sell anything with a nonprofit though. That's yeah. the thing. You know, I'm not trying to. It's more of like I facilitate something that's going on over here. Mm-hmm. So you give people a place to well, an opportunity. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't make money. This is like a big money lo- loss, but you know, it's important. Mm-hmm. It's something that benefits the community and yeah, makes a difference and. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, I like that. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, it's like, I'm telling you, it's like I've gotten a lot better jobs because of it because I'm no longer just a spray foam guy I've gotten. Yeah. You're a guy that actually cares about something. Yeah, like one of my customers, she was telling me that my builder was, she's an interior decorator, and she was telling me like one of my builders was like saying, yeah, he's so philanthropist, and he doesn't make anything off it. It's like, why does he do it? Like, just because he cares. I mean, why why, why do you do anything? What else? What else am I going to do? If you said, hey, I need you to go spend, like, $3,000 on yourself, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I could probably do that maybe once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we're broke. Yeah. No, not even that. It's like, go to on Amazon and, like, like I get all this Amazon points, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, every month I get, like, four, about three, four hundred dollars worth of Amazon money. Mm-hmm. And right now I'm at a point, like, by myself right though yeah for the guy that has like, everything what do i need <laughs> yeah like i was looking at like some uh, i was reading this article about like this emulator handheld console thing mm-hmm. and i was about to buy it and it was like 350 bucks and it was in the cart and i was about to hit the paypal thing and it, something didn't happen and i forgot all about it and i'm like i didn't even have time to use that i swear right like, yeah. why do i want this you just have, yeah like why like, if I'm just going to spend the money, I guess I'll, I'll do that. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever, dude. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do with that? Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> like, I have, like, all these PlayStation games I've ever touched. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I forgot I own that. <laughs> I swear, Shit. right? Yeah. All this stuff for your, like, free time that you don't have. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I've been playing the Yakuza game series, and that's what I've been playing for the past two and a half Ooh, years. Nice. Yeah. I've never, I've never played that Those one. are great. And yeah. my wife's like, is this like a forever game or what? I'm like, no, honey. I'm like on the seventh one of this series. Yeah. And she's like, you've just been playing this game for like the past. I said, no, I played like Death Stranding like during COVID. Yeah, you've had you've had I've, your little detours yeah, here and there. Yeah. yeah, I've been playing this pretty much nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> for the past seven, the past three years, and yeah. I'm like, oh, I guess. Like there was a collector's edition. It was like the fifty bucks, and I was like, oh, there's like. A whole year of gaming here. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I don't need anything else now. I swear, right? Yeah. Now I have twenty nine thousand or twenty nine hundred fifty, like left to to like fuck off. I guess I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's just something. It's like you learn that when you get, you know, if you do your shit right, you don't ever have to worry about money. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. It's like with people that worry about money, then they all that's all they worry. Then about. they worry about money. Yeah, and I've noticed that too. Yeah, that's unfortunate, man. Yeah, because yeah. it's like they grow up poor or something, and mm-hmm. it's like, dude, we had I like. I think that's all it is. Yeah. We had like all my brothers and sisters like in one bedroom. Yeah, same. High school, yeah. You know, and then it's like you start to like realize it. Yeah. If you can live without it, then you don't need. You know. Well, I remember like the moment I felt like a little bit more comfortable was that I had got like jasmine rice. Instead of white rice. Oh, nice. Because jasmine yeah. rice was like $4 and white rice was like 89 cents. Yeah, right. Yeah. You're like, ooh, I'm splurging here. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, I've made it. I've made, made it. I can buy jasmine it. rice. <laughs> but then I also realized that, you know, like, you know, you grow up and, you know, I, I had kids at a young age. I was like 20, a single dad and all this other stuff. So, you, you know, my other son was born when I was like 25. So I just realized, like, I don't really eat fruit. Because the fruit was for the kids. Yeah. Because it was like, yeah, you have money. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why well, don't I eat fruit? Like, I eat fruit all the fruit I want. Now. <laughs> but, you know, it's like those little sacrifices you make. You don't even realize that you made those sacrifices. Yeah. So it's just how life goes. and Yeah. Just as you get, like, it just kind of falls off on the wayside. Dude. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Interesting, dude. Yeah. Well, like, I was telling my wife the other day, like, we passed by the Chuck E. Cheese on, like, 26. And my son would freak the shit out. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, dry. I told my wife, I said, you know what? We probably had five dollars, so we could have just gone in there and just played for five dollars worth. Literally, of it. yeah. Uh, and we were passed by. My wife's like, "Oh, don't pass by that Chuck E. Cheese because Cam's gonna." Fl-. I was like, "You so know what? Go. I would pay like three grand just to take little Cam right now to Chuck E. Cheese." I'd be like, "Oh, oh yeah. yeah, let's go." I was like, yeah, <laughs> like just blow his mind. Like just give give him the best night. Like yeah. oh, like, I will pay three dollars, three thousand dollars right now to have that opportunity to do it again because I was stupid and didn't take it seriously. Oh yeah, you know. 
Damn, because yeah. you're so worried about like what you don't have, and you always had enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You could have you could have done something, a mm-hmm. little something here and there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like uh-huh. you just take that for granted that you don't have enough. Mm-hmm. Like there's a scarcity of something, and it's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, like you have what you, you have what you need. You have what you, you know, need. You yeah. probably have enough, and you know it's like you live in America. You have, probably have an iPhone or a cell phone that has right. a computer that you know a hundred years ago would have been like sorcery. I <laughs> swear, right? Yeah. Like when I was a kid, you'd be like, "What?" I remember like getting like digital watch. I'm like, "Holy shit!" That's yeah, awesome. <laughs> I had a. There was something that was like. A, so imagine you travel back a hundred years, and mm-hmm. you tell. You tell somebody that you have this machine in your pocket mm-hmm. that can answer any question that you could possibly want, yeah. any mathematical equation, anything that you could that you could mm-hmm. want it to do. It records video, does all this stuff, and you just play games on it and talk shit to people, basically. Yeah, like how that would just blow their mind. <laughs> like or they'd probably could... feel sorry for you, honestly. Dude, when the internet first hit, I was like, "Man, we're gonna be so smart." Cause I yeah. Was your... like, <laughs> this we're wealth gonna be of knowledge. So smart. Yeah. And then you realize why God tore the Tower of Babel down. And you're like, oh, that totally makes yes, sense because they're not using it correctly. Because they're dumbasses. Yeah. yeah, you're giving it to a, a basically a monkey. You, you know, definitely you're, are giving it to a monkey because yeah. it's just like, oh, it's, just... <laughs> it's an expensive paperweight. Yeah. God, you're so stupid. <laughs> okay, yeah. so let's go ahead and just take a little bit of time to okay. uh, just talk about, so for Central Arts, like what can be done for you? Like what? Like, not that you need anything or anything like that, but, like, what, what if somebody wanted to get involved, what could they do for you? Oh, we can always use volunteers. Um, what we do is we do – my whole philosophy is, like, I remember once we were having, like, $6 art classes, and there were some kids in the neighborhood, and they saw that was $6, and this kid's like, uh-uh, too expensive, no way. And wow. I'm like, all right, that shit's never going to happen again. So, like, if you can't afford it, you know, we make sure that the kid can go to class. You can go, yeah. I mean, there's been times, like, I've had moms and – they, they, you know, they give you a credit card. It doesn't run. And you're like, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like, it's important, you know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like we still have staff and we still have to make sure they're paid. And yeah. my belief is like if you're an artist, you should be getting paid for your, your effort. Mm-hmm. Or at least have a studio where you can work out. Yeah. So, like, any kind of donation like that goes a long way. Mm-hmm. You know, keep lights on and all that fun stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, I mean, just little things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, volunteer. Attend classes. Attending classes are great because it's like I don't feel bad about taking a donation from a class and yeah. you get something out of it. Yeah, you get to come and have a good time or night, something. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and then so you have these events and stuff like that. Yeah, and like, we're constantly yeah. having some kind of event. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we teamed up with Awareness Projects. So we'll be having concerts over there next door. And, nice, dude. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and we do concerts at Bedford and, mm-hmm. you know, we have arcades, so that's always a good time. Yeah, definitely. That's Tuesdays, did you Tuesdays, say? Tuesdays, uh-huh. That's awesome. Okay, starting at what, like eight or nine? Uh, seven. Or seven. Okay, cool. Seven till whenever. I might have to come hit one of those. Those are that sounds ass. really cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> those are really cool. I can't remember the last time I got to just sit and like go to an arcade. I guess there's that one over in Dallas. Like I don't uh-huh. remember what it's called. It's free like, play. Free play. Yeah, that's yeah. one of them. Yeah, and then uh, Select Start in Dallas. Mm-hmm. There's another one, that, but it's just a bar. You know what I mean, you go in there, you play guitar here, and get hammered. You know. Yeah, them. it's kind yeah. of fun just to have just hang out. Yeah. Yeah, so you just give, like, a safe place for people to mm-hmm. do that, you know? Yeah, so you come in, and then, like, are the machines paid, or is it, Oh, like... it's just, it's, like, a $10 donation, and it's, like, unlimited play. That's awesome, yeah. Yeah, everything's on free play. Cause That's then, totally worth it, yeah. We don't have to buy tax stickers for the state of Texas to use quarters. Yeah, right, yeah. To use quarters. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly more paperwork than it's worth. <laughs> Infinitely worse. <laughs> Well, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of fun. Yeah. You know, and we teamed up with Quarter Lounge, so that you know, that's how we were able to do this. And mm-hmm. It's just nice because the kids, you know, they go to school and they get that. They come to after school class and everything, and then they they get bored. They want to go play a game. Let them play a game. Mm-hmm. It's part of the fun thing Let's about it. play a game, yeah. It's like art, after school classes are kind of like more like an art club than anything else because just give the kids a safe place to play, you know? Yeah. Yeah, just keep them off the streets. Yeah, like That's my whole thing was I used to be like all about curriculum and everything. Like they need to be learning this. And then Cedric, my son, is like, yeah. Dad, they hear instruction all day long. Yeah. If a kid wants to paint for like 20 minutes to play a video game and then work with Legos and then watch a movie, yeah. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's for them to be safe. It's for them to have a place to be and hang out and feel important. I'm like, you know what? You're right. That's, That's really, awesome. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. An awesome. That's like, that's super awesome. Yeah. Whoa, dude, that's cool. Because yeah. then you watch these kids, and like they work, they paint on something, and mm-hmm. they go draw something, they go play a game, they yeah. get bored of the game, then they come make something again, and mm-hmm. they watch a little bit of a movie. Or and you're kind of looking at it from like, 
like almost like an older standpoint or like like you're trying to get something out of it but then you realize like it's the experience whatever experience the experience is have. like getting it out of it you know yeah it's whatever they get is I mean remember being they a get. little kid and get to play video games after yeah after school and do you need to go hang out with some people you know hang maybe out with your friends paint a little something you know yeah, yeah it's not kind of cool that's awesome dude yeah yeah was, you know I just wanted to program I wanted when I was a little kid or something mm-hmm. that's cool dude yeah yeah I was only shit my pants over that. I'd be like, oh my god, this is awesome. Yeah. So you get to kind of live vicariously through these kids mm-hmm. at the same time, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of funny because cool. it's like you have weird goals. Like, I want a Street Fighter machine like when I was in high school. Yeah. <laughs> I was a Street Fighter machine. <laughs> I, want, yeah. I want this. I nailed it. Check that one off there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like working with pick bricks. Like, I want to design Legos. Yeah. Like, there you oh, go. I'm designing Legos. Yeah, nice. Oh, I'm dude. getting paid to do that. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, and the kids, they probably don't see, like, the significance of that for you, but, yeah. (laughs) I want to get paid to do this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I can reach out to a company and say, hey, I want you to donate these, and they'll donate them to me. There you go, yeah. And I want you guys to, hey, can we team up on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's no skin off of them. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, because it's like, that's one of the things that you learn, is that you, like, I'm like once like one phone call away from like meeting George Bush in person and like you know I've, yeah. I've actually held some of his artwork in my hands I've done like stuff like that you nice. know and this is like remove, like weird removed stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah so those little things that and like, like you're like seem, oh okay know. that's almost there you know yeah like a little significant thing but it's like you know it's, it's wow I'm that much more closer to it so yeah that's cool dude yeah you know, just... so it sounds like you have like you're successful in your own way and it seems like you're a happy guy like mm-hmm. whatever it is that you have you know so yeah it's crazy because I'm like looking at like there's like a spray foam on worldwide thing and all these guys were showing off their Rolexes oh yeah and I'm like wow a Rolex <laughs> and then all these guys are like oh that's badass you know mm-hmm. and all these people are like commenting on it and he said, "Well, you guys are measuring your dicks by Rolexes this is my non-profit this is my yeah, Rolex this and is my Rolex too, and yeah Nobody gave a shit. And I'm like, God, you guys are dumb. You guys are really missing out. Oh, my gosh, dude. Yeah, it's crazy how the priority is. It's like, oh, wow, Rolex. (laughs) Yeah, so you threw like ten to $50,000 down the drain so that you could tell the time that's on your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, and then it's like, wow, Rolex. But, you know, then you get to see that girl that, you know, got to do her little strong woman pose. And you're like, dude, that's so much badass. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's a little. That's a neat, That's a like a deposit in like your heart right there, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, there was a little kid and she was running and I snapped a picture of her and I painted her on the mural. Mm-hmm. And her mom brings one of the kids to the Richardson class and I said, "Hey, I painted your daughter." Mm-hmm. And she's like, "No way!" And I'm like, "Yeah, I painted her on the wall." And she like saw it. She started crying. And she's like, "Oh my uh, god, this is awesome! Why would you do that? That's so great!" Yeah. And I'm like, "I just painted your kid because I just needed a kid to fill this little tiny." I space. swear, right? But I'm I just glad. need this little space here. I'm so glad it means something to you. It but, was like yeah. right underneath something. I just needed that space to be filled. Yeah. Uh, either your daughter or a cat. I don't know what I was gonna paint there. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so, nice, dude. Yeah. So yeah. I guess we're coming up over two hours. So yeah. I guess we'll go ahead well, and for end me. it there, dude. Dude, thank you very much for yeah. letting me come in and talk to you, man. Like, I'm, it's very good to meet you. Yeah, pleasure. Dude. Yeah. And I'm definitely, I'm going to have to come back here, dude, and, like, check this stuff out. Like, I've been doing the, uh, I did the, um, mm-hmm. the, uh, the Green Bodega event uh-huh. last weekend. And yeah. that was really cool, dude. And, like, I'm just kind of trying to get into, mm-hmm. like, the area and just kind of learn what people are doing around here. Because I, you know, I... I mean, I guess I have some time, and, like, mm-hmm. I'd like to do something good with The it, Awareness yeah. Project's great. Dude, they're so cool, man. Yeah. I love those guys, I too. took over that grocery store, and they're, like, we were, like, doing a food delivery. Mm-hmm. And Ryan's like, man, this would be perfect for us. Yeah. He's like, man, our place sucks. I'm like, well, <laughs> this is mine, so come on over. This mine is yours. Let's go, dude. Come yeah. on, let's go do it. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hell yeah. Keep up with them, dude, and, like, just fucking, mm-hmm. you, you stay cool, man. Yeah, thanks a lot. Absolutely, dude. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Stop this. Mm-hmm. Everybody's doing a great job. Josh over here is doing a great job. Ryan and Stanley, if you've made it this far, you guys are doing a great job. And mm-hmm. we will see you guys later, man.